Today's episode of the Nate Land Podcast is brought to you by Delete Me, Butcher Box, Rocket Money, and AG1. Hello, folks, and hey, Bear. Nate is not here, so we'll give you a few seconds to turn it off. <laughs> you read that like it was NPR. <laughs> yeah. That was very serious. Well, I, I'm closer to the mic than I usually am, so it yeah. feels very... Uh, what's that show? What's the show on NPR? Hot Breath? No. Uh, no what is it? Something like that, though, right? Fresh Air? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. not Fresh Air. All Things Considered. All Things yes. Considered, yeah. That's what it felt like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is Aaron Weber <laughs> here with Dusty Slay. All right. And Brian Bates. All right. Nate is Nate is somewhere. Somewhere in the world. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. I can't keep track of him anymore. But it's the three of us. <clears throat> Energy's good in the room. I feel good about this episode. Yeah, I mean, I feel great. I feel great about all of them. Mm-hmm. I come in here with a positive <laughs> attitude. And it just slowly drains yeah. away <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> over the course yeah. of two hours. He's diddling by five minutes in. One hour is a good length for a podcast, but two... Mm-hmm. It's a little much, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Have you always doodled during the episodes, or am I just noticing it more now? Nah, I'm just, uh, I'm doing it more now. Yeah. Okay. Is that by choice? <laughs> I don't find that doodling takes my concentration away from listening to people. Yeah, but it can take it away from the other three people at the mm-hmm. table. Mm-hmm. Do you ever think about that? Like you watch me draw? Well, it just feels, you feel a little disinterested. Okay. As we're talking, it's like when I'm at dinner with my wife, and I'm, I'm in the middle of a story, and she's on her phone. Well, the phone is different. Okay. Because a doodle is mindless. The phone takes your attention. Okay. But I get what you're saying. Okay. Um, it hasn't bothered me. It's just yeah. since we're talking about it's it. It's bothered me. I'll be well, telling you know, a story. I do think this. My <laughs> daughter, you know, we've been drawing more with our, my daughter. Yeah. Like, it's like, we're all addicted to our phones. I'm addicted to my phone. Sure. My wife's addicted to her phone. It's hard to keep our kids off these screens mm-hmm. because we're addicted to our screens mm-hmm. right but we are trying to make effort to do more drawing and stuff like that so that she has activities that are fun mm-hmm. that are not these screens okay i think that's great so we've been drawing a lot so i've been drawing more and uh, i used to love to draw mm-hmm. and now so now i'm drawing more. you're back into it yeah a little bit and you're just as good as you used to be yeah i mean my i i got to, i reached a level of drawing and yeah. then i never got better than that and I'm about the same spot. Mm-hmm. You're I'm not sure. as good as you once were, but no, you're I, as good once as <laughs> you've ever been. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I used to be good as a kid. I thought I was at least. And now I'm not as good. But as I'm growing more with my daughter, I'm getting better. It's like it's coming back to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, that's good. I mean, I I used to, my whole thing with drawing was not what, Aaron? You think about cave drawings? What are <laughs> no, you? no, no, no. Just this whole conversation's amusing. My, my thing wasn't an individual, like one individual piece of goodness. Mine was just like, I put a lot of stuff out there. I should bring some of these crazy. It's like your drawings. comedy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I Throw should, a lot of darts. That's right. I should bring a lot. I should bring some of those crazy drawings I did in here. Yeah, and you bring in your literature. I'll bring in my story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you bring in, you know, whatever y'all did. <laughs> you bring in your red wagon. Yeah. yeah. And we'll just compare yeah. our childhoods. To Radio you. flyer. <laughs> my daughter is, um, she watches these YouTube videos. To your point about screen time, she watches a sh- uh, show called Egg Surprise. Do you know this show? No. Was that where they open eggs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've seen something like that. And um, to the point where, so they go open, open. It's like a little surprise, and then there's something that pops out. Surprise eggs. Yeah, she calls it egg surprise, but I think it is called surprise eggs. Quite frankly, I think egg surprise is a better name. I think so, too. Um, This video has 607 million views. Yeah, the kids' videos have so much that I kind of want to start making kids' videos just for monetization on my my <laughs> channel. I'm like, because some of this stuff, I'm like, you know, this is pretty good animation, but some of them, they're like just playing with toys and making a lot of wild yeah, sound effects. Yeah. I could do it's that. It's nothing, but it affects her so much. <laughs> Yesterday, we did an Easter egg hunt with all these kids. All the other kids are just running, grabbing as many eggs as you can. She would get to one and go, Open, <laughs> open. Like it took her five minutes on each egg. So I think that's better. Well, a little delayed gratification. Quality over quantity. See that's what's right. in the egg. Is yeah. it good? Do I have enough? Usually it was nothing, egg? but yeah. 
So, I would like to start filming this with you, Dusty. Make some. Yeah. Uh, I like the idea of you doing a Bob Ross type show with some of your doodles. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's do that. You know, let's put it together. I think that yeah. could be fun. We what were you all? Uh, were you all up to this weekend? Where Where you been? Where we're going? I was home. Could have been working, but chose not to. Um, <laughs> hang out with my family. We did a lot of fun stuff. Like I said, we did an Easter egg hunt. And uh, oh yeah, Happy Easter! Thank you. Happy New Year to you. There April first. Well, yeah, I guess it is. Um, I don't know. I never know what what the you know what the New Year is. I mean. Technically speaking, the Bible says that Passover comes on the 10th day of mm-hmm. the first month. Right, and I right. think Passover is supposed to be April 22nd. Okay. So April 12th would be like the new year. Okay. So we're not quite there we're yet. We're not quite yet. Oh, okay. Well, I apologize. That's okay. Well, you're gearing not, up for the new year. Yeah, I'm gearing up. That was an April Fool's joke. I yeah. <laughs> threw yeah, <at> you. yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, uh, I've also not had a lot of sleep. Uh, mm-hmm. My daughter got up in the middle of the night and I read her about 10 books and sang some songs. And <laughs> and then I had to get up and do a bunch of radio calls today. So, Well, you did some call-ins? Yeah, I did five radio shows this morning. Wow. I tried to do the Zoom number. And that was so complicated. You for didn't me get to that set up. Set up? Uh, oh, I'll help you get a set up. Yeah. It's so easy. I love it now. Yeah, I do a VOIP. So I don't I, know what so any I can of that is. Just do phone. It's a voiceover IP, so I can do. I can call phone numbers on my computer. Mm. I use Zoom, but you can use whatever. They wanted me to put my home address in there, and mm. I was like, "Why not? No, Why no, are we doing no, that? I don't do that. That's when I can't you try to sign up for Clear." For yeah. <laughs> wanted all your information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I just was like, I don't know why you need this. I tried to put the PO box in, and they were like, we won't accept that. So oh, I was like, all right, man. well, just give me my money back. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. So where were you this weekend? I went to. I did two shows. I went to Jacksonville, Florida, Ponte Vedra, and uh, Duval. You know what? That's funny. Yeah. Uh, in the green, I don't know why. They didn't say it during my show, but in the green room, they were like, they're not booing. They're saying Duval. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was like, well, that's what I'll tell myself for the rest of my life. <laughs> that's weird. They did that in my show in Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. So I guess there's a lot of Jags fans there. Yeah. But uh, uh, it was great. The, the Ponte Vedra show sold out way in advance. The show was hot. The moment I got out there, it was hot. I had... Uh, Openers uh, didn't do well. No, they did great too. <laughs> <laughs> no, what? Uh, Chris Buck that listens to the oh, podcast. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, open Wesley. Uh, gosh, Snipe. Johnson, I Snipe. believe. Uh, <laughs> I hate that. I it is Johnson. I believe. I hate that. I'm forgetting his last name right now. And I this is like the we're having a good time podcast. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I just want to. Yeah, Wesley Johnson, and uh, they were great. They used to, you know, Chris has been my friend a long time. Wesley. Uh, hosted for me last time I was at the Jacksonville Comedy Zone. So we kind of brought that whole show to Ponte Vedra. It was hot, yeah. super hot show. The moment I got out there, I mean, I did, I think I did an hour, 25 minutes. I mean, <laughs> I am all about <laughs> time on these theater shows. I mean, I am milking it. It, it's so great. I mean, when the shows are good, it's like, they're just laughing, I'm riffing. And if you don't feel like you're keeping them there, you know? Yeah. Because I've had that feeling where I'm like, I get to the end. I'm like, all right, I'll let y'all go. Yeah. You're being nice, but I'll let you leave. Well, that's how it feels at a club a lot of times, right? right? Because they've done last call. They've already signed the receipt. All yeah. That. They're ready to get out of there. But then in that theater, I'm like, this is great. And then the next day, uh, I went to Atlanta, which the show was great. But I had I flew from Jacksonville to Atlanta. I did a direct. Mm. Flight was great. But as we're landing, it's starting to get real mm. rough, and mm-hmm. I'm starting to get a little motion sickness. And then I get an Uber, uh, and the Uber is about 45 minutes. Standstill traffic in Atlanta, of I course. Mean, and I don't, ha- I don't really have enough time to comfortably go to my hotel and then back to the mm. theater. So I just go to the theater. You're in road limbo. That's yeah. all you can do. I'm motion sick. <laughs> I'm out there walking around. Uh, yeah, and then uh, I ran into a guy out behind the theater from my dad's hometown, kind of my hometown in a in a sense, my second hometown mm-hmm. of Pennon, Alabama. Pennon, P E N T O N, pronounced Pennon. Hmm. And uh, if you say Penton, then you're like, uh, you know, here not from around here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, but the Atlanta show was really great. You did the one with me last year. This theater was uh, about 800 more people. Wow. Uh, it was huge uh, for me, about 1,800 yeah, seats. Yeah, this is the Atlanta Symphony Hall, right? Yeah. Yeah, 1,800 and, seats is enormous. Yeah. And it was a hot show. You sold it out? 
Uh, I don't think I sold it out, but I was Jeez, like, Brian. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> all right, I apologize. <laughs> no, we'll we'll edit this part out. I want to think I was like probably ninety five percent. It there might have go. been sold out, but there it wasn't go. sold out in advance. But it was very close, ninety five percent, something Ooh, like that's that. That's a bummer. All right, and uh, let's move on then. <laughs> But it was hot. I mean, hot show. And then I got to, you know, hang out with some, I have my my friends, uh, Vince Fabra, Evan Burke, that I kind of started comedy with on the show. Mm -hmm. Liam Nelson was there. And then I had some high school buddies. We all hung out after in the parking garage, had some cigars. And it was great. That's awesome. Man. I had some high school, for other high school friends just show up that I didn't know would be there. A lot That's of great. Nate Land people. There you go. Reg Griffin, who was reaching yeah. out looking for a meet and greet. I did a meet and greet. I wanted to do one, but it was a bit bigger of a theater than I'm used to. So mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know how that's going to work. But right. he had commented about it. So I was like, you know what? I got to do it. I got to do the <laughs> And you signed a baseball, right? I did sign a baseball. There's a guy who's been getting all of our signatures on the same baseball. Yeah, this baseball is so chewed up. Well, that's part of the story. And he it. gave me, uh, I think you let us sign it and then get it chewed up. But he gave me a Sharpie and I'm like, I barely signed this. It's like signing. <laughs> it's like, it's so tore up. Your signature looked pretty good. Yeah, well, I got a good signature. But uh, mine looked real bad. Mm -hmm. People will ask me to sign their t-shirt sometimes that they buy from me. And every time I go, listen, I'll do it, but it's not going to look good. Right. They go, I don't care. And then I'll do it. And usually they don't. And it's one girl at the show. She goes, I don't care. And then I signed it. And she, you could tell that she didn't like how it looked. And I was like, I told you. It's impossible to sign a t-shirt with like a sharp, like, yeah. or, any, or certainly a, not a pin. Mm -hmm. Have you signed a body part before? Yeah. <laughs> all the time what are you yeah. talking about Aaron? a couple of times i i don't get i'm not trying to do it but i have done it yeah if somebody yeah. asks yeah you'll do it somebody was like sign your name here i'm gonna get it tattooed i go well i'll sign it but don't do that please don't <laughs> yeah please don't get my signature don't tattooed do it. don't do it. i assume you have uh a couple times it's never it's just like a fat guy oh yeah you know what i mean where's he want you to sign on his chest I've had that. I've also had had women do that a couple of times. Yeah. But uh, but I'm like, you know, I'm a married man. I'm not and I'm not looking in to do that. You of know, of course, what I mean? but you don't want to disappoint a fan. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah. I don't like it. You also don't want to disappoint the people watching this yeah. go down, too. It's like, let's do it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You ever um uh, you don't sell your own merch anymore. No. But no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was about to ask this. You don't care about your fans anymore, right, Dusty? But I do do the meet and greet and stand next to the merch. But okay. I always thought I would never want to not sell my own merch. But like the moment I stopped doing it, I was like, oh, this is way better. Yeah, it's just scaled to a point where you can't do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you did it for a long time. So you'll still fit this question. Uh -huh. You ever feel awkward, though, when you're out there selling your shirts and there's some different size people and... Of you, course. You have to ask. Like, of course. What size you want? And you kind of yeah. point them toward a certain way. <laughs> well, you never. Well, you don't have to do it in a creepy way. <laughs> point them towards a way. You just go, what size would you yeah, like? Yeah, Brian puts a scale out there. Go, <laughs> stand on that and I'll eyeball it for you. It's just ask them what size they need. What I hate is if they're a little bigger and they go, what sizes do you have? And I'll go, I have from small to 3X. And they go, oh, I'm not that big. And I'm like. <laughs> I just, you ask what <laughs> sizes I have. I'm just giving you the range. I've told this story before, but I was selling shirts at That's the, my favorite a John story. Chris show way back in the day. We're in some church and this old woman comes up to me and she goes, uh, can I get a 2XL or a 3X? She goes, can I get a 3X? Mm -hmm. And I go, sure. And I gave it to her and she goes, thanks. This is for my husband. He's huge. I was like, oh, that's all right. Yeah, you know, I, I wear a 3X. It's not a big deal. And she goes, oh, yeah, let me get a 2X. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, I told that story on stage with my merch pitch forever. Yeah. yeah I thought it was so funny. Dude. It's so it good. is so funny. Yeah. Anyway. It's so good. I'm, I'm just, I don't point them, but like sometimes you're like, come on. You know what you do, you're man? Hold up the line. If you you want to make you don't need somebody, a medium. You, uh, here's a way to make a fan for life, dude. You get some bigger sizes. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to put them out. Just hide them in your suitcase. And you'll see a dude walk up who's a 4 or a 5X. Yeah. And he's like, hey, what do you got? And you go, I got you, dude. And then reach in. You throw a 4X at a guy. 
That's a fan for life, dude. Mm. Just have a couple of those in your suitcase. <laughs> That'll be fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, this is the two material shirts worth of fabric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want two hundred bucks? <laughs> <laughs> I did the first yeah. time I got merch. I had some three X's, and I thought, "Geez, I'll never sell these." And I did shows in Nebraska that weekend. Yeah. That's all I sold. I know. But here's the thing, dude. There's three X people everywhere, man. And you know, it's like people just seem like if it's a three X and oh, you must be so fat. It's people are just big. It's mm-hmm. not necessarily that mm-hmm. people are fat. It's like people are big. There's big people. Or they want a nighttime shirt. Yeah. You know, just well, something to throw on. You know, people can buy whatever they want, but it does bother me a little bit when I was selling my own merch when like a small person would go, Let me get a two X. I want to sleep in it. And I'm like, well, now. When the 2X person comes along and I don't have a shirt big enough for them, you're costing me a sale here. Did you just wear a shirt? Did you just wear it like a normal person? <laughs> How would you sell a small to a 2X size person? <laughs> you cut the sleeves yeah. off. And yeah. the- I would tell people in my cut merch the sides pitch, off too. It, when I would get down to the <laughs> end of the weekend and I, only, and I only had smalls, I would do stuff like that. I'd go, listen, all I got left is smalls, but they are very comfortable. Right. So even if you're bigger than that, <laughs> yeah. it'll feel good. You can wrap it up, yeah. use it as a do-rag. It'll feel good <laughs> tight against your skin. <laughs> you can wear it like an Under Armour shirt. Yeah. 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 yeah work out in this stuff. <laughs> uh, where were you, Eric? I had a... Very fun weekend, Las Vegas, Nevada. I was told multiple times I said it wrong last week. Mm -hmm. I said Nevada. And I want to say my instinct was to say Nevada, but for some reason I thought Nevada was correct. I think I would have been the same way. It's Nevada. I feel like I'll never not say Nevada. But the nice part is if you say Las Vegas, you don't have to say the state. Yeah. They know where you're talking about Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. I was in Las Vegas, Wise Guys Comedy Club. I did the smaller room there. They have two rooms now. Wow. Wise Guys Comedy Club does. And and Dry Bar's doing them right. I know, man. And that room, I mean, the shows I did were hot, dude. They weren't sold out, but it's a small enough room. Mm -hmm. That you can pack them in there. Everybody kept calling it a kill box. What's you that mean? That term? Well, it's a not. comedian term. I've heard you in it, and I heard it used a lot this weekend. Mm-hmm. I kind of don't like it, but it's appropriate. It's a kill. Saying box. that it's like you're just gonna kill in there. Yeah, where it's just like a perfect room to to have a good comedy. Well, show. they do say the thing about that club is that it's geared toward locals. Whereas everything yes. else in Vegas is geared toward tourists. Right Ooh. now, there's a lot of comedy. In the city, but most of it, you know, it's on the strip or whatever. That's different. This is in the arts district. This is locals. I mean, the host went up there, Jarrett, very funny guy. It was his first time hosting a weekend at the club. So he was excited. And he had a joke about know, anti-California or whatever, like, and the uh, place went nuts. Uh, so I was yeah. like, oh, these are local. Yeah. These are Las Vegas Whole people. whole country hates California people. Yeah, now. that's true. Yeah. That's true. California or Florida. Yeah. It's kind of like pick a side. <laughs> That's kind of well. The thing like. about Florida, though, the thing about California is they're moving out of there That's and true. moving to all these states. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and then Florida, they're, you know, they're moving to Florida. I mean, I don't, I don't know anybody go. Yeah, just moved here from Florida. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think of somebody. Right, but at the other Wise Guys Club, which just opened back in September, it's a different part of town. Big Jay Okerson was there. Mm. It's a much bigger room. Uh, much, but I, man, I like. It. The room I was in was great. We went by there and hung out with him. I had a great comedy weekend, dude. We did my show, then hung out at Big J's show. Then the next night, the Tropicana, which is a casino uh, in Vegas. It has the Laugh Factory comedy club there. The Tropicana is closing. Okay. So it was like the last weekend of the Laugh Factory. So we went over there. Dustin Nickerson was in town doing Brad Garrett's club. Huh. We went and hung out with him. Then we went to the Laugh Factory and hung out. Saw Brian Regan there. Wow. Uh, Jackie Cashian was there. All these wow. comedians that were. So we just like hung out. I was like, what a great comedy weekend! That's that awesome. Was. Yeah. Yeah. I got some embarrassing pictures of myself. It was Tropicana a good time. feels like a real classic place. That seems sad that it's closing, even though I don't have any <clears throat> connection to it. I think I might have this wrong, but I think that's where they're going to build the new baseball stadium. Okay. Which they don't seem to be thrilled about. I was saying, I would be so pumped if Nashville got an MLB team. But every time it was mentioned on stage in Vegas, it got booze. Oh, they're getting the A's. Yeah, they're getting the Oakland A's are moving out to Las Vegas. So I guess they're worried traffic's already bad. They are losing a lot. Oakland loses everything, dude. Yeah. To Las Vegas. I mean, the Raiders are in Las Vegas now. What kind of embarrassing pictures? 
did you take? <laughs> no, no, I was just like just hanging out. You know we're hanging out. Okay, I thought something happened in Vegas that stays in Vegas, but there's some photos out there. Well, yeah, it is going to stay in Vegas. I took it myself. Oh, uh, okay. That's all I'm saying. We'll just pull them up. Let's see. <laughs> no, we're not going to see. Did that. you see the sphere? I did see the sphere, and I didn't go in. Okay. You drive up, you're like, I get it. Okay. It also doesn't look as good in person. You can see, you can see the mechanism inside of it, uh, at least during the day. So it's not like a solid image up there. So we drove up. We were like, I get it. Mm-hmm. Did you have a steak? No. I love a steak in Vegas. <laughs> Why in Vegas? I don't know. It just feels good. Yeah. It feels right. What steak about a feels cigar? good everywhere. No, not cigars. We were doing other stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We were having a good time. Yeah. It was just more of a, I thought it would be a Vegas weekend, but it was a comedy weekend. I don't okay. know if that makes sense. Yeah. It, yes. like, it was like good comedy hangs. So. Did you and thank gamble you. at all? No, I didn't gamble. Yeah. Didn't gamble. Just on my health. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you to everybody who came out. That was two hot shows. I can't wait to go back. I was on stage the first night. I was like, God, I wish, I wish this was a special tape. Well, it I was like say, going that well. I want to say thank you to people that came to see me too. I forgot to say that. That's okay. It's implied. You reminded me. It's implied. Mm. I was just thinking of a way to put a button on that story. Anyway, I uh, <clears throat> I love you all. It's not lost on us. Film your special there. I should. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to be back for a while. I am going to be taping something soon. Call it Kill Box. Call it the Kill Box. Yeah. Call yeah. it the Slay Box. Name it after me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tuesday, I uh, all of a sudden, middle of the day, I started getting this pain in the top of my calf. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I guess just, a, I don't know, muscle tightness, or whatever. And I'm like, I'll go for a walk. It got kept getting worse and worse during the day. And then I Google, mm. yeah, exactly. <laughs> what could possibly be? And it said, if you've taken any long flights, it could be a blood clot. I'd just gotten back from the West Coast. Mm where I didn't get up the entire time on the plane. Yeah. So in my mind, I was sure I had a blood clot. I was doing these tests. You know, they said to try to do, I felt like it was happening. And blood clots can be very serious. Mm-hmm. So the next day, I went to the doctor. And I mean, I was sure I had a blood clot. I just basically wanted to tell him, I got a blood clot. Can we do something about it? You know, mm-hmm. they sent me for uh, like an ultrasound. Came back negative. I'm just, I'm just old. What was it? Just like I mean, I don't know. I still don't know. It's just a like routine a, muscle soreness, just a pulled your... muscle or something. I just did not in my calf, but I was, sh- I was wow. sure in my mind I had a blood clot. Wow. That's scary. You did you do stretching though? I did stretching. I looked online. It said if it's a pulled muscle, you're supposed to bend your foot one way and mm-hmm. it will relieve it. Or if you do, or maybe if you pull muscle, if you do this with your foot, it's supposed to help it. But if it's mm-hmm. a blood clot, it's supposed to hurt. And it was to me, it was hurting. So I'm like, ah, I got a blood clot. Wow. The problem is, uh, the, I'm not a doctor. The ain't now. They don't know anything. The problem <laughs> is uh, the anxiety that comes with any kind of body pain. Now, the moment I feel like, because this all happened to me after I ruptured my appendix. Used to be, I'm like, nah, I'm fine. Any body pain, I'm like, nah, I'm fine. But when I finally ruptured my appendix, I was like, oh, geez. So mm-hmm. now every time I'm like, and then like if you if if it's pains like that, usually I stretch and it goes away. Yeah. But like if it doesn't go away, it's like your mind can just go to a place. Yeah, you got kids, you're living for other people yeah, too. It's a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, and then anxiety can make that seem worse. Yep. Like, I don't have regular anxiety out here. I'm not worried about things, but something happens with my body, and I'm like, oh, jeez. You know what I mean? It's like. Well, I got one of those guns things if you need to use them, Brian. What is that? Those little things that just goes. Oh, it's a workout muscle pain. Oh, yeah. Theragun, whatever they're called. You ever use one of those? No. Yeah. I go to Feels the chiropractor, good. and uh, this guy, is he he cracks the back. Oh. I mean, well, I'm is, talking about for muscle stuff. Yeah, but it, yeah, I could use that too. Yeah, yeah, but it is. I'll bring it in one day. Let's do it. Yeah. Do it on the table, part of the podcast. <laughs> Patreon. Oh. Yeah. Should we get any comments? Let's do it. Well, before we even get into it, why don't you tell us about Delete Me? Well, let me ask you this, Brian. Have you ever wondered how much of your personal data is out there on the internet for anyone to see? Not enough? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, 
Well, well it's there's more, more than you think. Personal info, your name, contact info, social security number, and home address, even information about your family members, all being compiled by data brokers and sold to the highest bidders online. It's out there. Nate and Laura have been using Delete Me for a long time, and I've signed up too. It's easy. The I've onboarding. been using it too. Have you really? Yeah. It's nice, man. They send yeah. out reports monthly on what's out there, and I was surprised what they have started removing me from. They send personalized privacy reports showing what info they found, where they found it, what they removed. It's not a one-time service. They're always working for you, crawling through the internet, taking away stuff you don't want. Take control of your data data, and keep your private life private by signing up for Delete Me now at a special discount for our listeners. Listen in today. Get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to joindeletemecom slash Nate and use promo code Nate. The only way to get 20% off is to go to joindeletemecom slash Nate and enter code Nate at checkout. J-O-I-N-D-E-L-E-T-E-M-E dot com slash Nate. You know, the thing about stuff like that is they have, uh, there's, there can be so much info out there. There can mm-hmm. be various things and you have to like make them aware of it and then they will make it go right, away. Right. Like I was talking about using it uh, yeah. on uh, the We're Having a Good Time podcast and somebody messaged me and they said, well, if you're using it, uh, I just found this on you on this. So I, I sent that to, I have a guy that does this stuff for me. And so I sent it to him and he goes, oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. So he wow. went, but once they found that out, then I think they're able to make that go Scrub away. Scrub it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, nice. it's like, they're really working to, I mean, because there's so much out there with your address on it. And it's like, you know, a lot of Nate land fans are, uh, you know, uh, creeps, part- part-time creeps. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. they're like, oh, found all your addresses. And it's like, well, what are you, why are you doing it though? Why yeah. are you looking for it? <laughs> they always, hidden, they all say the same thing. You. They yeah. all say, hey, I'm not trying to, I just want you to know, I usually found your address. Here it is. Yeah, I'm Here's not a picture to, of your daughter. I'm not trying to be a creep. I'm just addicted to it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm not trying to be a creep, but here we go. I didn't mean to stalk you, but I just <laughs> feel the urge. And I wanted to come to your house and tell you about it. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, uh, let's. Who's reading them? Well, I think you should, Brian. Yeah. Let's All right. Get into. Them. Well, I want to say. I think people are <clears throat> sick of my voice by now. I agree. Um, this part's very important. Comments come from Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Apple Podcast Reviews, and Nate Land at NateBargatze.com. Or at Brian Bates nope. Comic. Just DM him. Nope. 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 Oh, can I start with one that I saw today? Sure. I mean, if you want to just throw the whole show to the wind, sure. Yeah, I saw. Just do whatever you want. I just want to say I saw this one today in the Nate Land Facebook group from Brittany Wessner Hefner. It says, Dusty is right about everything. So All thank right. you, Brittany. There's nothing more to well, that. That was her comment, and uh, she added some claps in there. But uh, <laughs> Dusty is right about everything. Uh, you probably should have saved that for a few comments in when you get blasted, and then you could have retracted okay. with that. But we'll just remember that. Oh, I, all right. Well, can I read this guy's comment on that one? Yeah. You guys are like this. Yeah, go ahead. Is he in here? Let me make sure he's not mentioned here. Okay. He says, I used to enjoy the show a whole lot more <laughs> until Eeyore started interrupting every conversation with doubts about everything. Who? Eeyore? I guess that's me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it was slightly amusing. Now it's just irritating and tired. Wow. And I, you know, I'm sorry, Dan. I'm sorry <laughs> that's happening to you. But you got to wake up and realize that uh, you can't. The truth hurts, you, Dan. You can't believe everything out it's here. Not all rainbows and unicorns out here. I know you lived a lot of life before the internet was around, <laughs> and it's like, but n- now it's out there, and so we are living in the information age, and you can find out that not everybody's telling you the truth out here. Get and with I, it. I don't shoot the messenger. Right. Okay? Right. All right. Sorry. All right. I uh, thought that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I am sorry, though, Dan. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a downer, dude. But I, I do like I'm not Eeyore. trying to be Eeyore. I do like Eeyore, though. Yeah. He's a realistic guy. Eeyore is. Eeyore's like Squidward. I'm just trying to find an analogy for my generation. Yeah. You ever watch SpongeBob? You a little probably, bit, yeah. yeah. Are you familiar with Squidward? He's yeah. like the, the Debbie Downer of the neighborhood. Yeah. And you grow up and you start to identify with him a little mm. more, right? You're like, yeah. hey, maybe shut up in the middle of the night. They know the next door neighbors yeah, exactly. causing a ruckus. Exactly. You know what I'm talking about? I have no idea. So in the Andy Griffith show, let's find a <laughs> reference. <laughs> That'd be Floyd the Barber for yes, me. That's yeah. right. <clears throat> exactly. uh, Grateful 58 
Such an amazingly enjoyable show. So many things to comment on. I forget them all. I should take notes. But the absolute standout is Nate asking, why is it the food pyramid bigger at the bottom? And Aaron saying slowly and wisely, because it's a pyramid. (laughs) And then Dusty losing it. Such great stuff. Yeah, it was a fun moment. You know, that was really fun because I had also just had a sip of water Mm -hmm. when you said that. And I almost spit it up. Mm -hmm. (coughs) So funny. I put a clip up of that this morning. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I'm glad you did because people love love that moment. Uh, Nicholas Butcher. Nicole's Butcher. Yeah, back in the day, Dusty, before you were with us. It's one of the first inside jokes of the podcast. Nicole's Butcher? Yeah, Nate misread that Nicole's Butcher. Oh, okay. So I was like, <laughs> why didn't just Nicole write in? <laughs> she had her Butcher <laughs> right yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 good times. Nicholas Butcher, Dusty was absolutely right. Prior to 2013, Pizza Hut was the number one buyer of kale in the United States. They used it to decorate their buffet bar. See, I don't know. This is a good example of like... Uh, is that a claim that you made? You just yeah. said that they were the number one. You well, just, I didn't say it specifically about Pizza Hut, I don't think, but yeah. buffets used to put it out. Okay. They would lay it on the buffet and then put stuff. Did we on challenge top you on that? I don't, I don't think so, but I, okay. I you know, I like I, I appreciate Nicholas coming in and letting <laughs> letting you guys know. Because people don't think that I know anything, but then mm-hmm. I mean Wow, I mean, look at this. Look uh, how much kale on this buffet spread right here. I know. I mean, that's more than the food. It's a lot of smoothies. Yeah. yeah. Why not just get fake kale, like fake plants in an apartment? You that's know? a good question. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, Taylor Smith. Using Dusty as a medical expert is tough. There we go. It's like some fact mixed with some decently science-backed opinions mixed with completely erroneous statements. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. Well, why don't you try to be more vague about it? You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, some facts in there, some decently science-backed opinions. What's a science-backed opinion? I mean, I do think yeah. on science, <laughs> you're with with food, yeah. nutrition, you're much more in agreement than, say, the moon or astronomy. I mean, most sci- or most doctors, I think, would agree with you. Water is the way to go. You should drink more water, less yeah. soda. Um, mm-hmm. McDonald's is and, poison. And who's using me as a medical expert? <laughs> I guess the podcast. But I go to the, I mean, I've been to the doctor right? Uh, about several things. Mm-hmm. And the doctor's always like, I don't know, man. We can run a test. When I ruptured my appendix, I went to the doctor and I talked to them about the pain that I was having. Mm-hmm. They said, well, we'll run some blood tests and find out what's going on. So I said, okay. And they ran the blood test. I'm in pain now. I have pain going on in my body. They, Scale of one to 10, where were you at? I don't know. Depending on the day, uh, you know, some days it wasn't really hurting at all. Other days, it was seven, eight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the day you came to see me at the St. Louis funny bone. Yeah. You were I mean, not in good shape. Yeah. I was not doing well. Yeah. I went to the doctor on that Monday. They ran these blood tests. They called me later. They go, good news. Everything's fine. <laughs> I go, okay, well, I'm in a lot of pain here. Yeah. So people, medical expert, it's like, listen, there are some very good doctors out there. I'm sure, but um, so I'm told. <laughs> but they're wrong about a lot of stuff. Sure, I sure. think I think medical malpractice is the third leading cause of death in this country. I think. Wow, um, that is right. number one. Uh, like broken uh, heart, like heart attack, <laughs> heart disease. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> it's something like that, and it's like you know because the body <clears throat> is tricky. All these things are tricky. You don't know what what's affecting what. You don't. I mean, it's like. You know, I mean, the stomach is a very complicated thing. Right. And we're eating a lot of poison out here. That's right. And it's like, it is messing us up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just saying you are more in line with them than you are with other forms of science. Yeah. Fast food's bad for you. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. I think they would agree with that. You're probably more pro-meat, maybe. (laughs) Yeah. That's what I've always said about you. (laughs) Yeah. Well, meat is good. Yeah. I mean, meat but too is much, good for you. Too much red meat is not good for you. That's what they say. Yeah. But, you know. I would I think vegetables would be higher. I think that you, we, you're you not supposed to, like, the quantities that we eat of food is bad. Yeah. But I think, re- like, a small amount of red meat, I think, is very good for you. But I think we should eat it every day. Mm-hmm. I don't always do that. But, I, you know, and it's like, 
you go get a hamburger, you're like, and then and then you feel bad or whatever. You always blame the meat, mm-hmm. right? But a lot of these hamburgers, it's it's buns that's made from some. We don't even know where the flowers comes from. Some enriched uh, wheat flour, yeah. and then it's like put together with a bunch of sugar and starches. Yeah. yeah. And then you got then you they know, spit on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got some cheese and maybe it's good cheese. Maybe it's American cheese yeah. that's uh practically plastic. But you leave it out and then never mold. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And then you eat that and you go and then you put a lot of mayonnaise on it or whatever. Yeah. And then you eat it and you go, I've been gaining weight. It's too much red meat. And it's yeah. like, well maybe it's all that other crap. Yeah, maybe a, a 64 <laughs> ounce Coke you drank with it, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And the fries. Yeah. You know, it's all a, delicious. It's all so yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, just, you know, I don't mean to get fired up. I'm not even mad at Taylor Smith, but his. No, I his, love him. That's why I put it in there. His sentence doesn't make a lot of sense. He, tr- You could tell he put a real word salad together. Uh, uh, decently science-backed opinions mixed with completely erroneous statements. Yeah, yeah, there's some syntax and grammatical yeah. errors in there. Taylor. Some facts, and then science back should be hyphenated. Yeah. But, you know, Taylor, give it another shot, Taylor. Taylor enjoys hearing themselves talk. <laughs> I, you can guarantee that. Well, we all do. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I do two podcasts a week yeah. and stand-up comedy. I'm an hour 25 <laughs> on stage, yeah, yeah. so I'm with Taylor on this yeah. one. Yeah. All right. Christopher Sarnowski. Great name. Sounds Bonehead. Like Monsters, Inc. Character. <laughs> yeah. Bonehead, referring to me, thinking 16 ounces is a gal and helps me understand why he's worried all the time. Well, I admit 16 ounce thinking that was a gallon is pretty dumb. I don't really understand why that would help him understand why I'm worried all the time, but mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, that's what is a 16 ounce. That's a, like that's a, a pound. That's a oh, regular bottle of regular bottle of water. 16.9. I think. Yeah. I thought it was weird. a gallon, but I was like, way off. When I was a kid. You thought that was a gallon? <laughs> I said that last week. Remember? Our, but you thought like a regular no, no, bottle no, no, of no. water was a gallon? I just, no, no, no. I know what a <laughs> gallon so is. You get a gallon of milk, you're like, what is this, a barrel? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when I was a kid, like you get, it was a 16 ounce Coke. And then they started <laughs> introducing the 20 ounce. And the 20 ounce was like a big deal. It was yeah. like, ooh, a mm-hmm. big Coke. Oh, yeah. And now 20 ounce is the standard. That's a small now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love it. I it's love like it. Hardee's. It when I, I grew up, we used to eat Hardee's like every day. I mean, it was Hardee's on the way home, and we would eat Hardee's all the time. And this is pre-Thick Burger, too. Oh, yeah. It's like a, a original Hardee's menu. Yeah, when they had chicken on the menu yeah. and Monster Burger. That mm-hmm. was a big one for me. But they they the small uh, that they used to have now doesn't really exist. The medium, the old medium is the small, the old right. large is the medium, and like you know, the same with people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it really is. <laughs> it is true. I was looking at an old wrestling video, and there's a wrestler named The Earthquake. Yeah, remember yeah. that guy? I do. I remember seeing that guy as a kid, thinking, <clears throat> "Jeez, that guy's big." And then I, I was like, "Oh, I saw four people like that at Walmart today." <laughs> I mean. I mean that guy. Yeah, well, I remember that's him. Like my dad after he lost weight. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Aaron after he lost weight. I remember. Yeah, I, I tried a bit about this for a while, but I watched the movie Heavyweights as an adult. Oh and yeah, I was like these kids aren't that fat. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some of these kids look pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. from my day, Refrigerator P- Perry right. was like the biggest football player you'd ever seen, and he was three hundred pounds. And yeah. now he would be a small offensive lineman. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm. All right. Uh, they wouldn't even call they call him mini fridge. Yeah. <laughs> Slim. <laughs> Slim Perry. <laughs> uh, Yeti cooler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where are we at? Will Russell. <laughs> Yeah. Aaron trying his best not to completely lose it while Dusty was reading the Butcher Box ad, and Dusty watching Aaron's almost breakdown was the best part of the podcast. Oh boy, <laughs> it, it made my day along with the st- stomach ache from laughing so hard. All That's right. very nice, Will. But it, I would say if you're pitching the podcast to somebody, <laughs> don't lead with the best part or the ad reads. 
<laughs> That's not a good sales pitch. For oh what man, we're you got to check here. this out. The yeah. ad reads are unreal. Okay, the best part are talking about butcher box. <laughs> you know, you would think though that you know, and maybe the ads they do like this because it's like you know, a lot of times I'm listening to podcasts, they hit an ad, I'm like skip, 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 yeah. skip, skip, because you know, you know, they're like a minute. You hit that on your iPhone, it's got the little thirty second you go boop boop, and yeah. then you're done. And uh, boop boop, but. You know, if it's gonna, you're gonna get some laughs in there. You're yeah. like listening, and you're listening for the laughs. But then you're like, oh, not man. only laughs, but the the biggest laughs of the whole podcast, yeah. apparently. To yeah, give you a stomachache. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot, Dusty, but won't you tell us about Butcher Box? Yeah, no. I mean, might as well. Did you, you sync that up so that it would time with boom? That's what I'm talking about. Dude. Get incredible deals <laughs> and premium. <laughs> 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 Get incredible deals and premium cuts from ButcherBox. We love using ButcherBox. It is high quality meat and seafood you can trust. Mm -hmm. It is so easy because it's delivered right to your door with free shipping. <clears throat> you know, I'm always making sure my food is as clean as it can get. I love it because it is 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, pork raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood. <laughs> ButcherBox allows me to order a head and make quality meals. I like that I'm always prepared with meat in the freezer, fresh <laughs> meat. <laughs> I am not home enough to run to the grocery store, so I love having what I need ready to go. The value of Butcher Box compared to the grocery is also much better. The grocery does not offer free po protein for a whole year. They don't. <laughs> Why would they? <laughs> Today, ButcherBox has given our listeners a special offer. Use my link, butcherbox.com slash Nate, and use code Nate to get $20 off your first order. That's butcherbox.com slash Nate. Code N-A-T-E. What's that spell? Nate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's my link, though. If it were my link, I'd be slash Dusty, I think. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. That's Nate's link. But, yeah. Uh, uh, but what's his podcast? It's your boss's link. It is. My boss. <laughs> my boss. That's right. <laughs> Brian's the HR department. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good times. My boss. All right. Uh, I gotta, it's a requirement to watch Nate's specials to do the right. podcast. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You got to pass yeah. an entry exam. When people ask, can they do the podcast? Uh, that you we go well. Have you watched all the specials? Mm -hmm. Get back to us when you can quote some of them. Well, not yeah. just watch it, memorize it. Yeah, know it. Yeah. yeah, do the closing bit on the Tennessee kid yeah. right now. Yeah, that's how you get it. That's a special of Nate's. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sound like a western Tennessee kid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, I think that would be iced coffee, whipped cream. Ice. Oh, maybe I don't know. After we, yeah, 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 I think it is. Okay, it's a call back to the half hour, right? I think so. Yeah, um, Derek. Well, Con you guys do got it memorized, huh? Uh, that one I knew very well because I was <laughs> touring with them all the time. Don't turn this on us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm HR. Dusty. That's our <laughs> boss, dude. <laughs> uh, Derek Cochran. A story my auctioneer grandpa told me. The roots of auctioneers goes back in in the Civil War. The colonel would sell the belongings of the dead soldiers to the other soldiers. One time a colonel was selling and he saw a Native American camp dancing and singing. He started saying the numbers in that same rhythm and has, and has grown from there. Still to this day, auctioneers are, call, call, are called colonels. All right. Whoa. Don't know if that's true, but that's what his grandpa said. How about that? I've been working on the auctioneering, dude. Oh, I'd yeah? say there's probably mm -hmm. a lot of completely erroneous, erroneous statements in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what this podcast is. Well, yeah, some science back stuff too. Let's hear it. Well, no, no, no I'm not ready to display it yet. Oh, okay. I've been working. I, I watched this guy, and he said he gave these phrases to say, and as you gradually get them faster and faster. So you do one, one and a quarter, one and a half, one seventy five, two, two and a quarter, two and a half, two seventy five, three, three and a quarter, three and a half, three seventy five, four, 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 four and a quarter, four and a half, four seventy five, five. You just do that, get it faster. Wow. Boom, that was I was good. just doing that in the car this weekend. Wow. Just looking like a crazy person yeah. in my car. Five, five and a quarter, five and a half, five seventy five, five seventy five, five seventy five, six, six and a quarter. You know, this is great. One That's of these good. days, it's starting to sound okay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now I just got to be able to say something. And then you mm -hmm. just throw some random things in right, here right. and there, mm -hmm. right? really mm -hmm. mix it up. <laughs> that was very good. I'm telling you, dude. And then once I find a bit to do it in, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, ah, just hit. That's what I'm talking auction about. Auction off plants. <coughs> Tie your plant joke. Somebody in. yelled, do the plant joke this weekend. And I did it. And uh, it's not good. Yeah. Uh, did not do, did not go. Well, well. the buildup, I guess. Is it's just... too much for too little. D- well, let me ask you this, though. Mm-hmm. Did the person that yell it out enjoy it? Did they come up to you after the show? I think they enjoyed the moment. They yelled, I'm sorry, but it was over. (laughs) Yeah. But that show was so hot. I didn't lose anybody on it. Yeah, it was good. That's awesome. Uh, Jonathan Eldridge. Mm. Hmm. (laughs) Ladridge. (laughs) Uh, old friend. I worked in an auctioneering school when in high school. Do people listen to this podcast, or is it the same 12 people? (laughs) (laughs) It's starting to feel like, yeah, we should just invite these people to just come hang out with us. It's a simulation. Mm -hmm. Well, people are not going to like you saying that because we have so many people right in. They're going to be like, oh, Brian has his 12 favorites. I don't think that's the case. Now, is there a program where you get a comment read, then now you get bumped to the top? Because that's what it feels like. I'm not questioning your process, but. I don't look at the names. I just. Find the comments that I, that I think what you're saying is just get better at writing. Like these people are good at writing. Comments. I guess so. They found I guess the so. Formula. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ladridge. I, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I worked at auctioneering school when in high school, and it's not nearly the trick you hope it is. Really, the only thing it is good for is driving away women at a party. Sorry, Aaron. Also, I'm surprised to hear that Dusty goes to auctions. As much hat and glasses touches as he does, I figured he might have been in a little trouble after he accidentally won all of the items. Great well, comment. That's really funny. That is funny. I don't I don't really go now. I did mm-hmm. go as a kid with my dad to the cattle auction. And uh But you I, go now and you can't yeah, we're having a good I'm just, time. I'm man. just waving. I'm just, you know, I'm like, hey, guy keeps looking at me and I go. <laughs> And it really gets me in a lot of trouble. No, uh, but I did work with an auctioneer not long ago. I did a gig where I was doing stand up and he was auctioning off items. Yeah. And he was great, man. I wish I knew, remembered his name, but dang, he was crushing it. I mm. think I was there when you started really doing the we're having a good time. Yeah. Because you had a moment on stage and I've told the story to other comics quite often. I don't remember which show, but it was not a hot show. No. But you were kind of having fun with how bad it was. So you're doing the wave thing. You go, I like the wave like this. And you, know, you don't want to go too high. It looks like you're asking a question. You like to just keep it down here. And you kind of <laughs> did this. And then, you, and then you caught you caught a woman with your hand and you go, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and I was dying, dude. I don't remember if it got laughs at all. <laughs> just, was this the main hanger? Gotcha. <laughs> might have been. It might have been after that. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> that's fun. I gotcha. That, though. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did some bad gigs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. Some real bad ones. Mm. I'm still doing them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, save your pictures for shows to the end of the podcast. Okay. Uh, Neil Curran. Come <laughs> <laughs> about bad gigs. <laughs> Speaking of bad gigs, this weekend. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Neil Curran. Kindly writing in to share that it was Phil Collins, not Queen, who performed in London, then took a Concorde to the U.S. and performed in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. He performed on two sides of the Atlantic on the same day. Well, I'm glad <clears throat> I wasn't too confident that it was Queen. I knew it was somebody at Live Aid, so mm-hmm. a few people let me know it was They're Phil Collins. They're basically the same, dude. Mark Frank. I've, I've been reading. <laughs> I'm not a huge Phil Phil Collins guy. Oh, I love Phil Collins. I was just like somebody was just telling me about you know uh, Genesis. They were like, oh, you you, you know they they were like yeah, they're like one of my favorite bands. You got to get into. Mm-hmm. So I went and listened, and I mean, I'm like the 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 greatest hits are great. Like the one, but I'm like I'm listening sure. to just albums. And I'm like, man, I, I'm only liking it when I get to like one of the greatest hits one. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is a good one. Yeah. But the other stuff, I'm just like, it's okay. It's gotta to be. It sounds. This sounds so lame, but some of it just sounds so dated. That eighty sound. Oh yeah. The drum tracks and everything. Like Phil Collins is a great drummer, but the yeah. drum tracks just sound so eighties. I yeah. mean, I was in Atlanta one time when mm-hmm. I, I, this was when this I was, weekend. this was like when I was like 18 or 19 and I'd never go to Atlanta. 
I mean, and it was like, it was like a big deal. I mean, that was like the city, uh -huh. you know? And we were at the Hard Rock Cafe in Atlanta and <laughs> in the air of the night was playing. Hard, this is, you know, this is late 90s, mm -hmm. early 2000s mm -hmm. when Hard Rock was like jamming. Mm -hmm. Everybody had the Hard Rock shirts and the, and the city on it. And the air of the night was playing. It was on all the TVs. It was loud. And then they hit that kind of, la that last doo-doo-doo-doo. And a yeah. guy in the kitchen bangs on the on the metal, yeah. like uh, in rhythm. And I was like, ah, this is amazing. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Ah, man, I loved it. That that song is incredible. Yeah. What's the name of it? In the Air of the Night. In the Air Tonight? Yeah, whatever it's called. Yeah. I can feel it coming <laughs> in the air at night. Or whatever, <laughs> whatever night it is. Oh, Lord. Remember that song by Phil Collins <laughs> in the <laughs> Air <laughs> of the Night <laughs> where the guy could have <laughs> saved that other guy from drowning but didn't? Remember uh, that? Yeah. Eminem. Eminem, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what? How does a band or someone decide to go solo? Because Genesis and Phil Collins sound the same to me. Oh yeah. Well, like you know, some of Paul McCartney stuff sounds like the Beatles. Yeah, I guess I'm just curious how sometimes people decide I'm going to be a band, and sometimes even yeah. if they're a solo artist, they still have a band behind them. You think about starting your own podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand why I need you guys. I think this is what happens. Like a lead singer uh, sometimes will be the the writer of all the stuff. Okay. And then they're like, I'm, and I don't, not every time, but mm -hmm. I think a lot of times they're like, I'm writing everything. I'm the recognizable one of this band. Right. Yet I'm still splitting the money mm -hmm. with this band. Yeah. Why I just I? go out on my own. But, you know, in the beginning, you, you know, you have your band. And, but yeah, in the end, you're like, you know, what? I'm just going to do this by myself. Sure. And sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Well, the band just breaks up. They're yeah. like, let's all, we all want to do our own stuff. Some side projects, you know. Mm hmm. Well, or like Bruce Springsteen. It's Bruce Springsteen, but the E Street Band. E Street Band. Rest in peace, Clarence. <clears throat> you know? um, He's played sax. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Frank. I've been dealing with a phone that barely connects to chargers for over a year. Jeez. Wow. When Barley, I think that's me, was talking about his phone charger conundrum, I just happened to find a pin, a pin small enough to clean my charging port out. Voila, phone chargers are working again perfectly. Y'all at Nate Land are making the world a better place. Thanks, buds. How about that? Sounds like Mark works in the government. <laughs> <laughs> How would you have pronounced V-O-I-L-A, Dusty? <laughs> voila. Voila. You would have got that? Yeah. Okay. Don't you say voila? I may not have gotten it. You're probably right. I, I emphasize the W. I would have loved Nate to read that word. You said voila? Isn't it voila? I think voila. I said voila, but um, I think you're probably right. Mm, you probably are right. But, I think you kind of do both. But I've heard voila so long that without seeing how it's spelled. Voila. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Nate would have said. Yeah. yeah. Voila, phone chargers. <laughs> like like a specific type of phone charger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> voila phone chargers voila are the best. Voila phone chargers are worth <laughs> No, well, I had a I had an issue like that too for a long time. I had a few people say the reason that it happened then was because you had those new pants that have all the pocket linen on. If you mm. buy a new pair of jeans, they got a lot of linen there when you first buy them. So Christy Johnson caused me some yeah. problems. You just had more new pants in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. It had been a while. Um, Spring Whitney, mm. what that name? Spring. I like Spring as a name. Yeah, Spring Whitney. Mm-hmm. Could be the season, could be the verb. Could be uh, could the be, creek. Could, there you go, spring. Or I'm thinking like oh, an yeah. actual spring. Yeah. Wow. A what noun. a name. Yeah. Uh, at the risk of coming off as too sensitive. Oh, jeez. It just kind of made my heart hurt a little with the whole making fun of Dusty not being invited <laughs> to the John Chris party. Thank you, Spring. <laughs> I know we're all adults here. But it just brought back memories of childhood when you were left out of things, either on purpose because they didn't like you, yes, or because they just didn't think about you, also yes. Not sure which one is more <laughs> worse. Which one is worse, actually? Well, I agree. I agree. I'm sorry, the Dusty. Whole statement. I uh, apologize for us making fun of you. <laughs> I'm usually the one that gets picked on. I was going to say, how different would this be if it was Brian that wasn't invited? <laughs> Would you, do you think you'd have put that comment in for the episode? <laughs> Spring Whitney, I understand where John Chris was coming from. Thank you, John. I'll say this about it, though. I'm yeah. gone a lot, and yeah. that particular 
time yeah. was like uh, I had not, I didn't have very many days at home. Sure. And had I been invited, I would have gone, but it was nice to go home. I think oh, I, I knew it. that, so I therefore, yeah, I feel like I was comfortable with us teasing you because I knew you didn't really care. Yeah. There were also a bunch of people there that weren't invited, just oh, so yeah. you know. So everyone would have been very excited if you showed up. Well, just I so don't you like know. to crash. Just so party. you were missed. There was no yeah. crashing. There was no crashing. Plus, roasting is just not even your thing. Well, you know, I don't like roast battle. Yeah, but a a, a friendly roast with a is, friend. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fun. Mm-hmm. You know. And I did invite him to my party to to roast me, mm-hmm. and, and he came. But uh, yeah, well, I'm sorry it took spring to bring it to. <laughs> it was a surprise thing for him. Yeah, he didn't not yeah. invite you. Yeah, just everyone else didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but spring, I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. I don't, know if you're, I don't know. Maybe spring's not her first name though. Maybe this is she has different. This is you know, maybe it's, it's really dusty, or maybe. <laughs> Maybe her name's Whitney, but we're in spring. So she's like, this is spring Whitney. Yeah, and fall yeah. R- Whitney writes in and says, I'm glad y'all didn't invite Dustin <laughs> yeah, to the yeah, party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Allison Hensley. Dusty mentioned the amount of sodas he would drink when he was younger. Hmm. When he referenced Coke, was he saying he drank Coke specifically, or is that just his word for any soda? Definitely just my word for any soda. Right. Yeah. Right. But you know, we because we would have like a grape soda, orange drink, mm-hmm. um, um, Doctor Thunder, Doctor Thunder, all the whatever Walmart had at the time. It was uh, Sam's Choice. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's what we had a lot of. Yes. And then my dad had like a like <clears throat> I don't remember what grocery store they had. Uh, maybe Piggly Wiggly, uh, uh, and they had um, Czech Cola. Czech Cola. Yeah. So you had like. Um, I think it was even Dr. Lightning or something like that. Dr. Lightning. And they would have a lot of different drinks like that. Czech Cola and, oh, Red Rock was also another one. Fact check. Coca-Cola does not cause a positive (laughs) COVID-19 test. Okay. (laughs) Dusty doesn't believe that. Oh, Red Rock was another one too. Red Rock soda? Yeah, look that up. Oh, man. But they didn't look like that. We were drinking them in a can. There's a can right right there. there. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Never heard of that. Yeah. Right. But the Coke is the all encompassing term. Like right. A friend comes over, you want a Coke or something? Yeah. And then they go, all right, yeah, what do you got? Sprite. Yeah. You know. Like khakis are like what all dress pants mm-hmm. to me at the time. And people that make fun of this, you wouldn't go to a restaurant and go, when you order something, you're specific about mm-hmm. it. Right. You never go, yeah, can I get a soda? Yeah. Right. You, you say specifically what you right. want. So. And if it wasn't Coke, which we did that as well, I would say soft drink before I say soda. Interesting. I would. We would. Uh, I think we were a little more redneck, and we would say like drink. Yeah. Let me get a drink. Yeah, maybe that. Yeah. yeah. I, I would never mm. say soda. Nah. I, I say so. sarsaparilla. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jasmine Lozano. Great name. A lot going on in there. A, yeah. lot of, a lot of pizzazz, a lot of flair, mm-hmm. a lot of fun. Dusty, your friend Marshall's alias was Mitch. You told this in another podcast when Aaron mentioned he uses the name Doug at restaurants. I'm shocked Brian didn't catch this retelling. Right. I caught it. I just have to pick my battles. Well, <laughs> thanks, Jasmine, for uh, bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> yes thank you jasmine well really i'm the one that brought it up by putting jasmine's comment in yeah, there but she <clears throat> she was on it though yeah well i didn't remember and uh, i didn't you know i knew i had told the story but let's be honest everything uh is told multiple times mm-hmm. i've told that story on here i've told it on my own podcast right. i've told it to other people right. i've told it to you know Friend groups that used to be friends with me and Marshall. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's a good story. I was thinking because this weekend, this is the second time I had done that club in Las Vegas. So I was able to pull up my set list from the last time I was oh. there. And I go, I'll do all new stuff this time. How nice would it be to have that with people? Yeah. You go to, you go to lunch with somebody, you pull up. All right. Here's what I talked about last oh, time. Yeah. Now I got to put together a set list for the conversation. That'll be the future of Google glasses totally you meet it's like terminator you meet them and it's telling you stuff <laughs> about them and you're like all right you told them this story last time right and then you you know you could use that even in a different way just to be fun like all right these are the stories i told them last time i'm gonna tell all the same stories mm-hmm. just to hit them just to 
if somebody starts telling you a story that they've already told you, do you stop them or do you let them tell it? It depends. Is the story good? Because I have told people recently, a couple of times, I go, you told me this story before, but I will hear it again. Oh, that's nice to hear. Yeah. But do you ever go, I'm going to cut you off right there? <laughs> You've already tried this on me. Nah, I wouldn't do that to them. Yeah. You ever have anybody who starts telling you a story? And you say, oh, yeah, yeah, you've told me this. And then they keep going. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did they even phase <laughs> mm -hmm, them? Mm -hmm. They're going to tell it again. Or they're like telling you about a movie and you're like, yeah, I've seen it. And, and they, they keep describing the plot to you. Yeah. 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 They're like, well, listen, this is my story. Okay. this I do this at all the parties. This is all I got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let me get through this. Yeah. I have a neighbor out in McMinnville. She's told me a story about her grandson several times mm -hmm. and uh, about the Amish. And I just think that I don't know if she remembers telling it or if it's just she's like, this is a fun story mm -hmm. for me to tell. And uh, so she's like, I'm going to keep doing it. And whether your laugh is real or fake, <laughs> you laugh every time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> just like audience members do a lot of times how long ago had you been to that wise guys before october 2022 was the last time i was there so about a year and a half about a year and that's a half. that's impressive yeah, you did a whole yeah, new thanks, set man. that is thanks dude <coughs> now if i were to do my best set there'd probably be some stuff from a year and a half ago it's a balance act isn't it yeah so yeah it's tough you should do all <laughs> of your stuff that you did from that album one time before <clears throat> on video and just I've put that on youtube it. i've thought about it i'm also 70 pounds lighter than i was when i recorded it the first yeah. time so it would look a little better but yeah do that whole thing just for fun i thought about it but do you think it was a lot of the same people it was some of the same people <clears throat> some people had my shirt last yeah. time i was there so it was some but i still like to challenge, <laughs> challenge myself to do yeah. newer stuff this is what i i've stopped i thought that i would just keep doing the setup for my wave joke and for the we're having a good time joke mm -hmm. because i like doing that <clears throat> but the last few weekends i've stopped doing it wow and it is uh i still say we're having a good time i still wave but i've not been doing the setup you don't need to describe it anymore they and know it yeah. feels pretty freeing i've been doing it for a long time it feels pretty freeing yeah you finally took one hand behind your back and you yeah. and now you're yeah I just I love it. uh because I'm like I like doing it because it when I do it it does give those things more impact and, give, and I'm not right. saying I won't ever do it again if I'm bombing somewhere I'm gonna I'm gonna do the way or corporate everything yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah but I I yeah it feels free I mean I so I'm doing an hour 25 out here not stuff on the special crazy that's great yeah a lot of stuff from the special before that but nothing. No, I'm no. Kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's all fresh. That's great. Well, the eclipse is next week. How about it? I read a prophecy um, that not only that it may hit the Parthenon, it may hit anyone who even visited the Parthenon. <laughs> so I'm so glad that I did not visit the Parthenon. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, my dad was here last week and my stepmom. Oh, I didn't know this. And <laughs> and uh, me and Hannah, we watched that you know, <clears throat> that prophecy about it. And it, it, it's got, it, we go, we didn't know where to take my dad. And we were like, you know what? Let's go to the Parthenon. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. the Parthenon creeps me out, right. but I've been there so many times. Yeah, I saw Hannah post a video of you with that big statue of so Athena. I'm like, I what in the world that, is going on God. here? We I lost know. Dusty. Dude. Yeah, we <laughs> lost him. He brought his kids there. It's so <laughs> creepy to me, but I love to go there. They did, Don't Tell Comedy did a show there oh, recently. Yeah. They did a show right in front of that statue. Oh, wow. Uh, very well attended. It I mean, it's a very cool setting for a show. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I bet the acoustics are good for that. <clears throat> it's creepy in there. Yeah, it's so creepy in there. Creepy. I saw where I wouldn't want to be in there at night. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. I, I can't believe you were in there during the daytime, but I can't believe I go either. Yeah. Mm. I, I'm disappointing myself. Yeah. I saw where Rutherford County Schools here in Tennessee, uh, which is Murfreesboro, close to Nashville, they're they're canceling school that day, next Monday, because they can't control kids staring at the sun. <laughs> 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 now, people have been roasting them for this. Yeah. Now, I read the article, but it seems kind of <clears throat> to make sense. Apparently, that's right when school's letting now, which this seems very early. It says, out of an abundance of caution, Rutherford County schools will be closed on April 8th because of the timing of the eclipse occurs when many students will be on buses and can't be supervised from looking at the eclipse. I mean, mm. just I say that. you want to give them the day off to look at the eclipse. Yeah. 
it's a special day. We're going to take the day off. You, know, you could do a half day. That seems yeah. like a fun compromise. You know, let them out at noon, gives them a couple hours to go where they want to go. Yeah. They can stare at the sun at home. But I think it's like two o'clock central. Doesn't that seem early to be kids on buses? No, they let them out early, man. They do? Yeah, they let them out early. These are, you know, the schools are falling apart. So let's just, let's send them home. Okay. I heard they're firing up CERN for it. You know, yeah. the, uh, they're getting, you know, the Hydron Collider out in Sweden. They're firing that bad boy up. I read that too. Trying to find some dark matter out here. Are right? they really? Yeah. What During the eclipse? Yeah. Is it going through Sweden? I don't the think eclipse? so. I think it's just it coincidental that it's yeah. happening at the same time. Yeah. Trying to summon some demons. You know, <laughs> getting summons it going. Demon. <laughs> uh. You know, some people say when they fired up last time, that's the world ended. We just didn't know it. Yeah, you know, I've that's heard some person like was that. dusty. Actually, yeah, yeah. But, did I say that? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I've heard stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know. It's um, gonna be fun. Well, I had a I had a conspiracy theory, and I can't remember what it was now. But I bet Dusty would be on board with this, but now I can't. Remember what it was. They were telling me in Las Vegas about the tunnel people that they have out there. Oh, did yeah. you know about that? Yeah, I've seen some stuff. Yeah, yeah, pretty crazy. I think Barstool Sports did like a thing on it. Oh. I think it was, it was something where it was odd where I was like, why are they doing this? Yeah. But yeah, the guy went down and was interviewing people and it's like, you couldn't go too deep. They say it get, they were like, it gets shadier the deeper you get. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> because like, I think they flood the tunnels once in a while just people to kind of People die flush, all the yeah, time down there. Just yeah. Anytime it out. rains, people, people mm. die down there. Apparently. It's like the sewers? Yeah, there's just a huge population. There's like a second city underneath the city. Yeah. Tunnel people, they're called. I they think we talked about that with New York as well. A lot of people live down yeah, in the subway. Has yeah. it? I think uh, Oregon mm-hmm. has something like that too. Wow. They have some underground tunnels. And I had I was walking to the gas station in Las Vegas. This dude comes up, and they will approach you in Las Vegas. I'll say that. Yeah. This dude comes up. He's f- uh, fully tatted, and he walks up to me. He goes, "You got any cash?" And I give him like two bucks, and he goes, "Man, I'm in a world that's not my own." <laughs> wow. And I go, Amen, brother. <laughs> Look on Dusty's face. He was He's like, like, I'm with this yeah. guy. <laughs> He's like, Yeah, you're not. But I go, What does that mean? He goes, Man, I came out here from Idaho. I'm the only real punk rocker in this city. <laughs> and then I watched him walk away for a while. And he just walked out into into yeah. the horizon. Yeah. So I've been thinking well, about it. I think punk rocks. Rock is dead. So I agree with that guy. <laughs> I should have been like, yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> go back to Idaho, brother. You should yeah. have given him Dusty's dates and say, go talk to him. <laughs> yeah. You don't have a lot in common. Yeah. I'm in a world that's not my own. Yeah. 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 Well, that is a good time to talk to that guy about some stuff, but right. it's hard. It's right. hard out there. He, you didn't want to talk to this You guy. were like, well, I, hope, I'm, I, I actually am surprised that you said, what does that mean? It was such a funny, right. crazy right. thing to say that it didn't even follow what had just happened. You're like, yeah. well, I hope that two bucks helps you. Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't even ask him how he was doing. He just told me, I'm in a world that's not my own. Yeah. Anyway. Huh. Well, okay. All right. I thought Nate's not here. This would be a good time to talk about poetry. All right. <laughs> because we can get into what we want to talk that's about. Right. That's right. Poetry true art of this podcast now we should address this up top you say the word a little funny oh i do yeah what do you call the so a poet would write a poem <laughs> i don't even know how i say it poem <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy dude nah. oh i say it with one syllable and it's two no you say poem <laughs> okay and i don't know what i say now. it's a poem poem yeah 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 yeah, it's the it's country coming out. We but it's talk, two we're, syllables. We're talking about poem twing. It's like it's two what? syllables, right? <laughs> poem, yeah. And I say it with one. Poem. Plus some other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're throwing wise in there. Well, how do you That's say it, crazy, Dusty? Dude, P- a poem. Yeah, uh, I think you heard Aaron. Once you're called out on it, then you overthink. It. <clears throat> I don't think I would have been calling it. I mean, I've been into poetry uh, for a bit. I mean, I don't know a lot about it, but I'm I'm into. It. <laughs> You You're into the mean? idea of it. Yeah. You ever written any poetry? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Wow. Did yeah. you bring it? I didn't bring it. I I, I wouldn't uh, want to be sharing it. Okay. Well, it was like private stuff. To- yeah. I mean, I not published any poetry, but I used to, I really got into it. Like, <laughs> It'd be crazy if we, if you had and we didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. I actually got a book. <laughs> you know, the internet ruined a lot of stuff for me, but uh, because, you know, back in the time when you could just be bored, mm-hmm. I got very creative with stuff. I, I was living on the beach. 
uh, in the, uh, you know, 2003 or four, uh, around that time, drinking a good bit, uh, going to the beach a lot. I was writing poetry. Yeah. I was getting into it and reading the Charles Bukowski stuff and, uh, listening to a lot of Bob Dylan, a lot of early Bob Dylan, which is very poetry like <coughs> stuff. Yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, doesn't he have a Nobel prize for poetry? Uh, that sounds right. I don't know, but yeah, Bob Dylan does. I mean, the uh, were you writing poems to people, like love poems? No, to people, no, or is it just, just like almost just to unload your own thoughts. On yeah, just unload my own thoughts. Mm. And I was getting into it. I mean, I love the rhyme. I write a little bit now. I wrote a I wrote a country song the other day that I really liked. Literature. I Ooh. shared it with some people, and nobody liked it. But uh, uh, <laughs> who'd you share it with? A couple of country singers that I know. And, mm -hmm. uh, that's like them sharing jokes with you they said yeah i well i prefaced it like that i go listen people share jokes with me all the time i'm just uh -huh. gonna send this to you and they weren't like i don't like this but you know it's you know they didn't send back a demo or anything <laughs> y'all know ben rector the musician yeah i'm a huge fan of his and i saw him randomly on the street in raleigh north carolina and then i saw him at the airport so we followed each other on Instagram and he like, Oh, you went up to him. Yeah, I went up to him, but he, he's familiar with Nate. He's familiar with the podcast okay. and he's very nice. So he probably was less familiar with me than he let on. Cause he's a nice guy. Yeah. But I posted a, an Instagram story with a song and he responded and said, this is a great song. So I was like, Oh, All right. this guy likes my music. music yeah. So I go, Hey, have you ever checked this guy out? And I said it, and I was just like, "What am I doing, dude? I'm recommending music, right? To, like, you're bonding with a guy. Well, I just didn't, haven't heard back yet. So the guy, <laughs> it's like John Chris. I think the friendship ended pretty quick. You know what I mean? He's like, ah, oh, good grief. It was also like it was a reach of a suggestion. Mm. It was like it was a gamble, yeah, mm because -hmm. he could check it out and be like, ugh, you went for it. This guy stinks, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, you're probably blocked. It can happen. <laughs> Why is it my message going through? Well, this is going to be a long episode for me since I say it incorrectly because I got a lot here. I'm about sorry, poems. but I just feel like we needed to call it out. Okay, so I say poetry. I'm good. <laughs> Why are you hitting it so hard when you say That's how I say it. Okay. okay. Well, tell me how to say that. Keep going. No, just just <laughs> try it again. I'll just do it my way, okay? Just try it again, yeah. Try it again? I'm going to say it the same way. <laughs> Poetry. <laughs> well, what's going on? <laughs> no, I okay. just, we talked about it for so long, and then you hit it so hard. <laughs> You hit it so hard. Point. <laughs> you heard a point? That's crazy. All right. Sorry, Brian. It's all sorry, right. dude. I'll I got to. I'll get it together. <clears throat> just avoid saying it however you can. It's going to be tough because I know it's the topic, but just try to avoid it. Um, okay. Boy, yeah, there's a, that word's in here a lot. It's coming up a lot, huh? <laughs> oh, boy. All right, let me just give Dusty a second. Uh, no, I'm good. No, 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 we're good. We're good. We're back. We're back. We're back. My stomach hurts, though. <laughs> a poem. Is it better? Poem. 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 I like poem. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, really separate the syllables like that, too. Poem. Poem? Yeah. You poem? Yeah, you're great. You're a great. Poem? I'm used to it now. <laughs> a poem? <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A poem <laughs> is is what? Finish the sentence. Well, okay, I'll just, just keep going. Sentence, All right. Dude. It's a piece of writing that in contrast to prose primarily aims to evoke emotion in readers and listeners. Poems <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Often make use of rhyme schemes, rhythmic structures, and figurative language. All poetry, 
prioritizes emotional impact. A poem can make this impact through word choice, rhythm, perspective, use of literary devices, or a combination of these. Right, right, right. Yeah. Did you guys get any of that? Yeah, yeah, I got it all. I got it all. Also, I think we knew what a poem was. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad we got into it. Well, have you written poetry? I have. Really? I have, actually. Anything you'd like to share? <clears throat> I would, actually. Um, but, I mean, there's a... <laughs> I'll share it. But what, okay. I, I just saying, you say you know what a poem I know, is. No, I was just kidding. Yeah, yeah. There's a difference it. between lyrics totally. and a song. Totally. And rap. It could be different things. Mm-hmm. Prose. Have, have you written raps? Yeah, I've written everything. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in fifth grade, I wrote a poem for my school newspaper about the basketball game that we had in front of the school. He did journalistic poetry. I did. (laughs) And they had a suggestion box that no one had ever used the entire time it had been there. Yeah. And this was junior high newspapers. You can imagine how bad it is. So I wrote in fifth grade this poem, and I put it in the box. And (laughs) when Dusty's eyes get big like that, he's just trying to hold it together. I feel great. And I zoned out. They published it on the front of the paper. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Wow. So you're a published poet. Yeah. I am for my for my school newspaper. It doesn't matter where it was published; it was on paper. Absolutely. And back then, they had to. I mean, they had to put all those letters (laughs) in the thing, and then it wasn't computer. It it was it was typing. Yeah, I wrote a poem for my high school graduation. They did not use it, but I did write one, (laughs) (laughs) and I think it was in contention to to be one of the ones, but it it did not get picked. What what are we talking? Was this uh, like parameter? What was this? Just uh, you know, I What's don't know, that? but it would what just kind of meter where you were. I would be like, I would be like one line, and then the next line, and then one line, and then line four rhymes with line two. Isn't kind that of, a limerick? Maybe. All right, I got there the difference. once was a man from Peru who dreamt he was eating a shoe. He woke with a fright in the middle of the night to found that his dream had come true. How about that? Right oh, now, wow. that's a limerick. See, I I I would say it would be more like um, there was once a man. All right, let me tell you the different types. <laughs> Maybe we'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right, there's there's three main genres. Narrative, poetry. Yeah. Dramatic. I'll just, I won't say the second yeah. word. Narrative, dramatic. And lyric. lyric. Narrative is tells a story. Dramatic is used in plays with dramatic action. And lyric expresses a person's state of mind or attitude. Uh, okay. Those are the three main groups. And then there's a lot of subgroups like haku. Uh, haiku <laughs> haiku ode elegy and limerick <laughs> this is a tough one for me yeah, there's a lot of words well i don't haiku. know any of these words you so know what a haiku is you well i know what a haiku is but uh, i wrote a haiku in the car on the way here did you really let's yeah. hear it well first let me tell you what a haiku is right um it's a ancient form of japanese poetry <laughs> It's, it's small size. It consists of just three lines. Right. The first and third lines have five syllables, whereas the second has seven. Right. So you knew that. Yeah. yeah. Five, seven, five. <clears throat> okay. You know a lot more about poetry <laughs> than I do. <laughs> you hadn't heard of a haiku before? I had, but I could okay. have told you the five, oh, seven, okay. five. Okay. I just knew it was a short. Yeah. yeah. So poem. you wrote a haiku? I wrote it in the car here. Um, Nate is a comic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he is doing wait he is doing better than me wait is that yeah it's eight. Oh uh, wait i had it yeah it, the well car. the way you say it it's Not like he six is maybe he's doing better than me there you go he's he's he's, he's done better than me he's done <laughs> doing better, better than, than, me. than me he's doing better than me seven yeah he's all doing right better so than we'll me. do that yeah unbelievable <laughs> <laughs> That's, oh, that's perfect. Yeah, Use a Nate yeah, word. That's great. That's yeah, yeah. A Nate Land uh, Yeah, how about that? Haiku. Unbelievable. <laughs> Write your own hakus and put those in the comments. We'll read all your hakus. <laughs> I was going to do me, but we couldn't determine if my name was one syllable or two. So, oh, that's right, Brian. Yeah, Brian. Brian. I Brian. figured out. You know, there was a wrestler named Flying Brian Pillman, but we always called him. You've told Flying this story, Brian, did I? I <laughs> yeah. <told> it. Okay. <laughs> Listen, go got, ahead. Tell I it again. Nothing new. That's okay, right. guys. The well's dry for all of us. Flying Brian. 
There's That's, there's free verse. That might have been what you were doing. Free verse. Dusty. There's a sonnet. Free verse meaning that like like I would go uh like uh I wrote a um uh well I feel like all of mine have some kind of reference that you know I'm all, you know I was you don't yeah I was doing mention? a lot of stuff. Yeah, the, you're what, living a different life. Whatever yeah. you not told you, last week you told us about a broomstick in your eye, so Yeah. Well, yeah. no, I just mean like, you know, this was like I, I wrote a poem one time. It was like, there once was a man who lived in the woods. Everyone came to him because he had the goods. Like it That's was great. those kind of poems. Oh, sure. However sure. that works. So it'd yeah. be like that line and the next line and then a line and then another nice. line. Nice. Yeah. I like it. Uh, there's that was a, a, called The Woodsman, and it was a uh, longer poem, but that's the only ones I remember. Now, do you know <laughs> Walking Through the Woods on a snow, Snowy Evening? Do you know that? Yeah. One? Is that Robert Frost? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is this is a very famous poem. Mm-hmm. Two paths diverged in, a, in the woods. I know that one. Right? This, that's the same one. That's just the first line of it. Right? No, they're two different poems. Whoa. Yeah. You well, got me, dude. Mr. Poetry was that over a trap? here. Was that a trap? No, you're just dumber than I thought. <laughs> That's the easiest one. And you, you took the path uh, less What's that traveled, poem called? And it's made all the difference. Two what? roads diverge in a woods? Uh, in the woods? I don't know. That I mean, I think most difference. people would say the road less traveled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought that's what you were going to say. No, but what's the actual poem called? It's called, that one's called The Road Not Taken. The Road Not Taken. And most people, what is it most people think it's about? It's about, uh, I think it's widely misinterpreted. Well, all right. You do more, know more than I thought. Uh, I think everyone quotes that poem as like, well, you should just do what everybody else is not doing. That's where the real value is, is in taking the road less You heard traveled. that, right? Yeah. Taking your own path. I think the actual poem is about. about a guy reflecting on his past and convincing himself that he made, that he took the right path, even though he knows deep down he probably didn't. That's closer. Okay. He actually wrote it for a friend of his who could not make a decision and was kind of making fun of him. Like, you can't decide which road to go down. And now you'll just think about the road you didn't take. Wow. Most people take it as a positive. It was actually a negative about focusing on the road you didn't take. Wow. But it's quoted all the time. That's probably like the one poem (laughs) most people can name is that poem. But I'd like to think of it, you know, just in my own way. You take the road less traveled. Yeah. That's made all the difference because you you get new ex, new and different experiences that the majority of people don't get because they're taking the one that everybody's taking. So they're all having the same experiences. But if you take the one less traveled, then you gain more experience. This is so interesting. This is such a philosophical difference between the two. Of, it, this is honestly, this is like this goes back to like Philosophy. our biblical interpretation. Yeah, I'm reading exegetically, and you're reading eisegetically. Whoa! I wish right. Nate was here for this. Right. What does that mean? It's just you talking about you get your own. You don't care about the the poet's intent at all. Well, I guess I do care, but I'm like you know, with art, it's like they write it and put it out. And right. there was a time where you wouldn't have really got right what they intended for you to get. Mm-hmm. You would just read it and interpret it how you interpret it. Sure. And now we're able to find commentaries and maybe it existed, but it wasn't a quick Google search, you know? Sure. So you would just see the poem and read the poem and then be like, this is what it means to me. And the same way looking at a painting is like, this means this to me, but maybe the artist meant it to mean something else. Interesting. Yeah. I think that's a good way to look at it. And I think they would probably, as long as you enjoy it, I think they'd say, make it what you want it to be. But mm-hmm. to be fair, I've not spent a lot of time reading that poem and <laughs> yeah, yeah, dissecting yeah. it. No, neither have I. Yeah. I mean, his friend didn't get it, and they would write letters back and forth, and he finally had to tell him, dude, I'm, I, he kept getting him clues. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm making fun of you. Like, this is a poem about <laughs> you oh where, you know. And then he published it. And it became yeah. super famous. It became his most famous poem. But I've spent a lot of time listening to music albums, like especially, uh, you know, I, I made this reference several times, but before the internet, when, when before, and, and, and not even before the internet, but before music was so endlessly accessible, uh, I would listen, you know, I might, I had Pink Floyd, The Wall, disc one. I didn't even have disc two. 
Mm-hmm. I just, this one just came into my possession and we would listen to it all the time. And me and my friends would listen and try to break it down and, and, and see what story he's trying to tell. Mm-hmm. And I love doing that. I mean, you know, then you can, you know, later you can look up what he really means or whatever in the commentary, but it's like, I love doing that. Yeah, you listen to it backwards. Yeah, too. I mean, it's like... Try it, to find all the yeah, hidden stuff. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, later I learned that a lot of this stuff is pretty dark. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, and I don't want it <laughs> leaking into my subconscious, but at the time... Oh, it's in there. Like, yeah, yeah. like Led Zeppelin, I'm like, I'm completely out on now. I feel uh-huh. like they're very dark, but man, I used to... Stairway to Heaven, I mean, I listened to that song like yeah. you wouldn't believe trying to you know, dig in there, find out what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had songs like that, that you totally misinterpreted and then, but you still like it because you just like your version. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of one, but I I had just thought about this. You've been singing a song your whole life and then you don't actually, you know, like a good example, semi-charmed life by third eye blind. Remember that song? Oh yeah. Yeah. You sing that as a kid. I sing it as a kid. Such a fun song. Yeah. And then you look into the lyrics and it's then I bumped again. Then I yeah, bumped again. Yeah, it's yeah. about uh drugs. Yeah. What was the song you said at Nate's graduation that's actually about suicide or something? You remember that? Not at Nate's graduation, but don't fear the Reaper. Oh yeah, that was one of our first episodes. Mm-hmm. Maybe our first episode mm-hmm. you mentioned that. But I thought he had a song at I, but I guess that was the one. I was yeah, I, I can't remember. I think there's there's another one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. don't fear the Reaper, yeah. Early Radiohead albums. I used to really Kid A. Uh, I mean, I really tore up Kid A. Kid A. I mean, there's a. There's Never a, heard of that. There's a guy named uh, M. Ward, and he had a uh, an album uh, that I used to. I really loved it. I, I forget the actual album. Yeah, Radiohead Kid A is like. Mm. I mean, that album is. Radiohead is not that good anymore, but that album and Amnesiac is another one. Yeah, those yeah, are bad. That was their next album. Um, the uh, M Ward, oh, it's called Transfiguration of Vincent. Uh, great album, very poetry oriented. This guy went on to record an album with with the girl Chloe. Uh, she was an actress. She was in Elf. Uh, mm-hmm. Chloe Deschanel, M Ward, and her Z- it, Zoe Deschanel. Zoe Deschanel. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. <clears throat> the two of them recorded an album together. Oh, okay. Later. Hmm. Uh, he, yeah. her, she, and I are. are what is it? Uh, I think that's the band. She Us? and I. Us and I, no, she and I, I think is what it's called. Uh, <laughs> Matt and Kim. Uh, yeah, I have to check that out, man. I only really know the one Radiohead song, Creep. Oh, yeah. I mean, and that, these, and that is, that's a hot song. The It is a hot song. But that, the guy who got me into Radiohead told me that, the, he's like, I like Creep. He's like, that album, not even worth listen, listening to. Whoa. But the other, like, five that Dang. we got into, mm-hmm. man. I got to tell you, with poetry, you got to get out there. I always have an instinct to like think this is stupid, right? And you got to get past that a little bit Mm -hmm. and just like tell yourself. Kind of like improv. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Kind of. Yeah, for sure. I remember this poem, I think freshman year of high school, we were shown this poem at school. And I lost it at how dumb I thought this was. It's called The Red Wheelbarrow by William Carlos Williams. Have you heard of this poem? I have not. So, I mean, we could, we have time to read it out loud. If you can't see it, it's about 13 words in this. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rain water beside the white chickens. It's beautiful. <laughs> I'm into it. You're I mean, I, I'm in like, I, well, listen, I, I use a wheelbarrow sometimes. <laughs> and I, I uh, say wheelbarrow. I said barrel for a long time too, until uh-huh. I saw it in a, in a kid's book the other day. And I was like, geez, I've been saying this wrong my whole life. But uh, I use a wheelbarrow, you know, and it, it, and it, my life is not depending on farming, but if your life is depending on farming and this is the wheelbarrow is the only way you got stuff to get around. It's like a lot is dependent on is that. If this poem is about like appreciating how the, cool the wheelbarrow is. Is that a it, famous poem? That's a very famous one. Yeah. Wow. Look how long the Wikipedia entry is for this poem. Wow. Considerably longer than the poem itself. I'll that's say amazing. that. And what is it about it that makes it so special? Well, it's a prime example of early 20th century imagism. 
So okay. there you go. 16 words long. The Red Wheelbarrow is one of William's most, that's William Carlos Williams, the author, his most frequently anthologized poems and a prime example of whatever. Sometimes I, I think mm-hmm. people's over explanations of a poem like that, it does ruin the whole creative take that you could have because now you read it and you go oh that's what it means so now your whole imagination yeah. is gone because you read this person's explanation i agree but but be honest if your kid brought this poem home and was like i wrote this you'd be like this stinks it doesn't even make sense what are you writing about? right but because some were told that this is a good poem then you can be like oh it is pretty nice i guess i agree with that but there needs to be some someone being like no this is good mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. analyze it a little i feel bit. that way about art yeah Paintings yeah a lot of, of modern like, art and modern, modern art world is not that. old art old art is like you're like this is <laughs> that's the right term yeah. yeah i guess what i'm saying is i'm not even denying that this is a good or important poem but i'm saying if you found these words written on a piece of paper in the street you would throw it away yeah you'd be like this is nonsense it's a crazy person right yeah exactly now, what is kind of cool is each stanza kind of looks like a wheelbarrow. Let's see it again. Oh, you're looking right at it right here on the right. Oh, oh okay. Look yeah. at that. You see it? Yeah. That's on see purpose? the shape of it? I don't know. I like to think it's on purpose. Hmm. I think it is on purpose. It's got to be. Okay. It's got to be. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe you I should tried to find. Tell us a- about rocket money. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hold that thought, Dusty. Hold that thought. We're just Dusty. getting behind here on, okay. on ads. Well, I'll tell you what, in addition to analyzing poetry, I've also struggled with finding time to manage my finances. <laughs> That's the issue, time. At the end of a busy week being on the road, the last thing I want to do is spend time budgeting all my expenses or tracking down customer service teams to cancel old subscriptions. I no longer use. That's why I don't do it. I use Rocket Money. It does all of that for me. It's a personal finance. Finance? app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so you can grow your savings. I love how the dashboard shows me this month's spending compared to last month so I can feel bad about myself and clearly see my spending habits. Plus, it'll help me create a custom budget so I can keep track of everything. Rocket Money has over 5 million users, million, mm. and has saved a total of 500 million Million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to seven hundred and forty dollars a year oh. <laughs> when using all of the app's features. So stop wasting time on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash nate. That is rocketmoney.com slash nate. Rocketmoney.com slash nate. Finance. Finance. I'm sorry to interrupt you. And people get mad at yeah, me okay. when I interrupt conversations. We got to like, do it. We like I want to be the one that just interjects I these know, ads. I know. I know. You're just a cog in the machine. That's right. So I'm sorry, Dusty. It's I didn't mean okay. to interrupt you. Do you even remember? Yeah, I remember. Um, Is the moment gone? No, I don't know. It, it, it's not gone, but now it feels... But I was trying to find a Charles Bukowski poem that I used to really like. Yeah. And it was basically... Uh, what he seemed to be describing was his girlfriend uh, just complaining at him uh-huh. all day about every little thing. And then at the end going, uh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Is sort it called Girlfriends? Is that the name of the poem? No. Well, it's like the thing about it, I couldn't find it. Uh, there's so many. I mean, he's always talking about women. and um, mm-hmm. This but, guy's your hero, right? He's not my hero, but like... Uh, I really, I mean, I think, I think he is kind of a, you know, when you get, if you get into poetry, he's kind of, I don't know. I don't want to say he's like an entry level guy, but mm-hmm. I think he's more no, popular than a lot. He's uh, accessible. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But I. Yeah. I don't think that. Uh, I understand the instinct to think that that's reductive of yeah. him in some way, but no, it's like easily you can. It's an easy read. But I just, and I think that's it, right? And it's not all rhyming. So you, you're just reading this guy's little stories. Mm-hmm. And I just think that it, uh, I don't know, it always resonated with me. Yeah. I always liked that kind of lifestyle of just kind of like on your own. Mm-hmm. Kinda, no responsibilities. Yeah. Contributing nothing. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing well, you but- read some of these guys, uh, Emerson and Thoreau and all these dorks, they just wanted to be a tree. Yeah. They're like, God, I wish God had made me a tree. 
And they, you, you know, know I mean? they mm-hmm. just go out in the wilderness. I mean, mm-hmm. Hannah read a lot of these books. I forget. Uh, and she would always tell me about them. She's like, you should read this guy. You would love this. But they, you know, they just want to go out into the woods and they want to be with nature. And that's where they get their creativity from. And I think there is something to that. I mean, you know, not to just go to the Bible every time, but it's like, you know, Jesus would disappear off into the woods and mm-hmm. would go. I mean, it's like all people in the Bible would go out into the woods and meditate in the woods. I think there's a there's a thing about it. The woods gives you creativity, gives you a spark. Do some grounding. Yeah. Do some grounding. Touch some trees. You ever seen Into the Wild? Read some fresh yeah. air. Yeah. Okay. It's a great book. Great movie. Yeah. But the whole point of it is, is he is he wants to go out in the wilderness because he believes you don't need human beings to to achieve happiness, right? Yeah. Happiness. I think the way he words it is happiness is not reached principally through human experiences, right? So he's like, I'll just go out, just be in the Alaskan wilderness and I'll mm-hmm, be happy. Mm-hmm. And he dies out there, not to spoil mm-hmm. the movie if you haven't seen it, but found in his book, he had scribbled in the margins, happiness only real when shared. Yeah. He basically, he concluded out there, it was all nonsense. You need, you need people. Well, yeah, to be happy. So I, I think you got to have a balance of both. Balance is exactly right. Well, right. the the issue is, I think these dorks they went out there and they just, yeah, they you know they weren't around people, right? You do because it's like yeah, it's like if sorry to call them dorks. I don't know what else to call. Them. Well, yeah, they're literary just, giants. If you <laughs> just <laughs> if you just in for lack of a better term, if you're just in the city and just hanging out with people all the time, uh-huh. only socializing. Then you're you're not getting uh, any time to recharge, but if you're only recharging all the time, mm-hmm. then what what are you even recharging? Well, for? People recharge differently, though. Some people re- recharge in social situations. Introverts and extroverts. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah maybe. <laughs> but I do think you should get some solitude, a time and away from your phone, right. a time to not. Just take things in, yes. process the things that yeah. you're taking in. Be alone with your thoughts. I don't think we Overthink spend enough things. time now processing. Okay. That's why I keep referencing before the internet. And it's really not the internet. It's before the smartphone. Um, when, you know, like like before the smartphone, you would go, like I would go to the beach. I would get off work and I would go down to the beach by myself and I would just sit there. Mm-hmm. And I lived two or three blocks from the ocean. I would just walk down there be in the sun, be grounding. I didn't even know about grounding and I didn't even really care about being in the sun, but I just knew it felt good yeah. and I would just sit there and think about stuff. Wasn't that like the lowest time of your life though? In some ways. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was all, also the big, in some ways it was, yeah. yeah but yeah. I was also thinking and processing right, things, right, right. being very creative, Yeah. getting bored, being sad. That was interesting what you said about boredom earlier and just, I, wa- I bet there are a lot fewer poets today than there were back in these times you know yeah i i I can't i see kids now that are 10 and 12 in that age and i can't imagine they're writing poetry you know yeah they're just do you come up with creative ideas in the shower or on a walk or cutting the grass in the car usually when you're you allow your brain a little bit time to yeah where you're phone. just alone with yourself yeah you're not looking at a phone you're right do you dusty I'm looking at the windshield the car used to be huge for me when I would drive to do gigs I would do especially doing these comedies on gigs a lot of them would be so bad that I would end up my my a jokes were not working and I would start riffing and I would riff on stage and then I would get in the car on Sunday driving home thinking about these riffs. And then I would think about new jokes to add on to them. And I wrote a lot of jokes. The Mobile Homeowners Association, I remember writing, this wasn't a comedy zone. It was uh, uh, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. There was a club called The Laughing Gas. Yeah. And I remember going home and that whole Mobile Homeowners Association, I kind of came up with it that weekend. And I thought about a lot more stuff in the car. And it was just like, it was great. Mm-hmm. There were other things I would do, but um, not for this podcast. But I, um, <laughs> but my mind would be stimulated, and uh, um, and I just would think of a lot of stuff. Not all of it was good, but I would think about a lot of stuff. Um, that other Robert Frost poem that poem that I can't say it that That's we referenced. Okay. Yeah, uh, stopping by the woods on a snowy evening. I forgot what oh, the okay title is. I'll uh, look it up. Um, After apple picking, <laughs> sorry. No. War thoughts at home. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up. 
anyway, I read somewhere that some people think it he was referencing Santa Claus. <laughs> Interesting. And if you read it, it, there's some little clues that would make you maybe think it. Do I think that's what it was? No. But uh, you had it up there. Right here. Yeah. Uh, Stopping by Woods. Should we do a dramatic poetry reading right Yeah, here? do it. I think I'd like you to do it, Dusty. <clears throat> I didn't read through this one time well, before. but uh, whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping there to watch his woods fill up with snow. And so on and so forth. My well, little me, horse me, must... Yeah, okay. how, how about I highlight the parts... <laughs> <laughs> okay. The parts that they yes. think reference it. His okay. horse thinks it's odd that they're stopping by a farmhouse... Uh, without a farmhouse near. Does he mm -hmm. think it's odd? <laughs> he thinks it's queer. <laughs> there you go. To stop without a farmhouse near, as they like to say, oh, Santa, why are you stopping here? He gives his harness bells a shake. That could be, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, uh, the woods are lovely, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. As if to say, he's got a busy night. He can't wow. be stopping to look at it. No. Wow. Well, I'll never be able to read this another way. Hmm. You're reading it a lot? Every night. Yeah. Every snowy evening. I sit, <laughs> I sit down and I read. I'm a big poetry head. I read a lot of poetry. Are you serious? I hate prose. Yeah. Do you, you know? Ever listen to the song by Bob Dylan, Tangled Up in Blue. Sure. That's a great one. Is that about a the real, Easter Bunny? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, real poetry kind of song. And and, uh, and Hootie and the Blowfish uh, has the song, I Only, I Only Want to Be With You. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they take like basically a whole verse from from Tangled Up in Blue and put it right in that song. Yeah, they even say Tangled Up in Blue, don't they? Yeah, but they just take straight up like a whole verse. I don't mind it. I think it's great. But aren't they almost just referencing Bob Dylan? Like I think they are referencing it, but you know, but they they still use a whole verse. Mm. Yeah, it's a good song. Yeah, Bob Dylan, Nobel Prize winner. So you mentioned a couple weeks ago, Shakespeare. Buckets of Rain, also a good one. He's got, I mean, we could go all day. We could go all day with, with yeah. the hits, but there's some there's some secrets in there. I'm talking the about hits. some, uh, yeah, <clears throat> some B-sides, yeah. as they say. Yeah. Meet Me in the Morning. That's mm -hmm. a good one. I think uh, that's what it's called. Sorry. Mr. Tambourine Man. <laughs> Shakespeare wrote a sonnet. That's a good one, though. <laughs> called Shall, Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer Day. You referenced right. it a couple yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, that's a ago. hot one. I I'm just always assume you don't like. Have you heard of this poem? Yeah, I always assumed it was about a man uh, talking about a woman. W did did you? Or maybe mm, you, you knew? Knowing what I know now about Shakespeare, I don't know. It was a man talking about a man. Yeah, and just yeah. it's a good looking dude, and I'm impressed by mm -hmm. you know his physical nature. Right. Now that makes me read that totally different. Of course, not that I'm going around <laughs> quoting this po poem a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't be self-conscious about how you say poem. Well, it's yeah, kind of I'm a little sorry bit hard. I did it. I'm sorry I did it. It was very it, funny. It was funny in the moment. Now it's gone. Mm. Yeah. All right. So we're not even thinking about it anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're not. I'm You're sorry. not? No, we're not even thinking about the way you say it anymore is what I'm saying. And I'm sorry if I made you self-conscious about it. Uh, and I really value our friendship. Well, that's gone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> limericks? Have you heard of a limerick? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah we referenced yeah, it earlier. Yeah, it's yeah. got the traditional A-A-B-B-A. A-A-B-B-A. That's a hot structure. You know what yeah, that is? Yeah, you know, a lot of country songs are like that, too. Um, Charlie Daniels has a song called Trudy. Call up Trudy on the telephone. Such a great song. Is that a limerick? I think, I think they do A-A-B-B-A. -B -B -A. Interesting. I hmm. think so. Yeah. But I could be wrong about that, too. That... Not the uh, chorus. Call up Trudy on the telephone. Send her a letter. In the that mail. song's got some interesting. Just got to town last Friday. Because there's one time where he <laughs> fires up a, a motorcycle or something. He goes, or a car. He goes, boogie, boogie. Oh, yeah. He just throws in Heard some. Heard the buzz whining and the sirens wheel. Boogie, boogie? Boogie, to boogie. Yeah. I think that's what it's like. Boogie, boogie. Yeah, something like oh, that. Okay. It's just funny. He just kind of throws in. Yeah. yeah. That's a great song. Charlie Daniels was unbelievable. Rest in peace. All right, I'll do a couple more. Ode. Ode. You ever heard of Ode? Ode to Joy? That's a song. Ode to Joy. That's a hot Ode song. Ode to Billy Joe. Okay. It's written to praise a person. You know that one? Ode to Billy Joe? Mm -hmm. 
Do you know o- uh, Odes of Joy? That's a, oh no, I don't know that one. It was a poem that Beethoven set to music. Oh, okay. The, his ninth and last symphony. Yeah. You would know it if you heard you it. You would recognize it. I love, Be- I do like Beethoven. I like classical music a lot. It's I don't probably know a the lot most famous classical music. I don't know a lot of the music. names, but I do love classical music. Yeah. Uh, ballad. Um, mm-hmm. What about The Raven? Oh, yeah. Edgar Allan Poe. That's- yeah. Yeah, I used to go down to uh, Sullivan's Island. They had a bar called Poe's down there. Back when I was still eating shellfish, they had a hamburger with a crab cake on it. And it was unbelievable. Mm. I'm, uh, I'm trying to play Oats of Joy well, for you real quick. Oh, okay. I was going to say, if, Dusty, if you want to tell us about AG1. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, you're actually playing this. Just like I remember it. You don't know that one? Yeah. Wow. Wow. You know it? Yeah, I mean, I knew it before he played it. Uh, maybe if you heard it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if you heard it. With... Well, I'd just like to tell you real quick that it's important. <laughs> it's, it's important to me that the supplements I take are of the highest quality. Nobody tell Nate about this. <laughs> it's our boss. It's, it's, a, AG1. it's important to me <laughs> that the supplements I take are of the highest quality. Yeah. And that's why for the past year and a half, every day, I've been drinking AG1. Mm. Unlike many supplement brands, AG1 conducts relentless testing to set the standard for purity and potency. Very high. I know I can trust <laughs> what's in every scoop of AG1 Everyone. because it's tested for 950 contaminants and wow. banned substances, while the industry standard typically only tests for 10. Wow, that's over 90 times more. Mm. Taking care of my health shouldn't be complicated, and AG1 simplifies this by making... There's a typo here. By making it so there aren't mil- uh, aren't a million different pills and capsules to yep. keep track of. Just one scoop of AG1 mixed with water every day. There you go. AG1's ingredients are heavily researched for efficacy and quality. And I love that every scoop also includes vitamin C and zinc to support my immune health. Right. We've partnered with AG1 for so long because they make such a high quality product that I genuinely look forward to drinking every day. So if you want to replace your multivitamin and more, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D31 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first subscription yep. at drinkag1.com slash Nate. That's drinkag1.com slash Nate. Check it out baby wow that was an interesting energy you brought to that yeah it was. Like that, that was like poetry yeah, did good. you like that, that one was, was i thought very poetic i thought to get serious with it mm-hmm. you tried, tried it. To, some ups and downs but yep. i got a little i got yeah. a little jumbled yeah they put an s instead of a t and they really threw me yeah. off. you did your own interpretation of it yeah how about that it means something different to me than it means to you now let me ask you this where what about snapping because that's the trope, right? Is a guy reads a poem and the crowd snaps. What is that all about? I did not know that. I don't know why you can't just clap. That's why I've never did. been to a poetry reading. But you've never seen it depicted in a sitcom or something? No, I've been. Snapping? In Charleston, I you would. You don't even be, know what I'm talking about? I mean, I can. That's instead of clapping, they snap. A guy with a guy with a bongo and then everybody snaps. you never seen that? I don't think I have. You ever go to a poetry open mic to do comedy? No, I never. I've done that a few times. Yeah. Did you do a little poetry while you were up there? No, but I, I, I have a way of doing comedy that the poetry readers appreciate. <laughs> and they were like, thanks for not coming in here and yelling and roasting the room. And yeah. Cussing. You went to slam poetry. I had to follow a slam poet at a mm-hmm. show at a mm-hmm. barber shop in Milan, Tennessee. And he brought he brought some real energy to it. He was, you know. What was your first words right when you took the stage? I said, I said, keep it going for uh, the the poem guy. And I said, I'd like to do a little. (laughs) I said, I'd like to do a little poetry now. Quit. (laughs) I'll keep going for the point that you just heard. (laughs) 
You know, yeah. uh, <laughs> Russell Simmons used to have Def Comedy Jam. I remember that. And then he, well, yeah, everybody remembers that. But then he switched <laughs> to, that's not the exciting part, no, Dusty. No. He I do to remember what you're going to say. Def Poetry Slam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably didn't say it like that, but. Yeah. Um, Get a little Def Poetry. <laughs> 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 I should host it. Um, the Raven, as I mentioned before, oh, the yeah. Raven, never, never more, more, never more. The ba- one, also one of my favorite wrestlers for a little while. You remember the Raven? Also one of my favorite football teams. Well, I was going to say the Baltimore Ravens. That's what that name. Yeah, he's a Baltimore guy, right? Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, I think he lived there. And was is buried there. Yeah, he died on the side of the street, married to his cousin. Wow, drunk. Mm. That's why he died. He urinated on himself. That's how he died. One of our greatest poets. That's how he died. So okay. anyone out there thinking about getting into poetry, that's how it ends. That is a Charles Bukowski. That was that did not that was meant to be a No, joke. that I'm is sorry. a I got no laughs from well, anybody. Well, no, is that, that true? If there's if nobody at the table laughs, it comes across much differently than I like. Yeah, I think that is how he died, but I, I don't want to discourage our younger listeners from getting into poetry. So you know, I'm sorry if I did that. That was a a a, a thing I did find uh like Charles Bukowski like advice to young men and it was like uh it was all about not getting into poetry and i don't know <laughs> that, that sounds I, like some good advice well he was like he, he, his list of advice was like do it was like things you would never do but he kept listing off those any and then he's like basically like anything but poetry do you know oh captain my captain all right guys uh I don't try to do yeah, that. I know it from Dead Poets Society, which we watched together. Yeah. Yeah. That's no. one of my favorite movies. I can't, I just found out I've been pronouncing it wrong the whole time, but I love that movie. Um, wait, wait, now what poem is that from? Is that from Walt Whitman? Walt Whitman. He wrote it about Abraham Lincoln when he was assassinated. Oh, wow. You know Walt Whitman? Barbaric Yop. I, I know the name. I don't yeah. know anything about him. Though. He did some good stuff. Did you ever see Dead Poets Society? I don't think so. God, it's a hot movie. Is You'd it? like it. Who's who's that? Sean Connery? No, that's Finding no. Forrester, but you might be thinking about a it. A young Ethan Hawke. Okay. Isn't it? Robin Williams. Robin, Robin Williams. Williams I would the, I would be yeah. into that. Finding Forrester, I've talked about here before. W- one of my favorites. Such a great movie. It is I great would movie. be I think I would be into Dead Poet Society. Yeah, you would. I like boarding school movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. School Ties. I don't know why you that is. That movie? School Ties. Yeah, School Ties it's is great. It's a good one. Well, you What's went to another, a boarding school. Well, I, I didn't. But Basically. Right? College. Uh, what's another? There's a bunch of them, I feel like. Yeah. School Ties is a good one. Yeah. Okay. There is more uh, of that. Feel. Scent of a Woman. Oh, yeah. There you That's go. a boarding school movie. They all came out about the same time. This movie, The Holdovers, that just came out, which won a bunch of Oscars. I recommend that. That movie is great. I heard it's great. Do you know what acrostic? Mm -mm. You ever heard that? Mm. It's when the lines. Did you say acoustic? (laughs) Probably. It's when (laughs) the lines are arranged. It's when a guitar is not plugged in. (laughs) (laughs) It's when the lines are arranged so the first letter of each line helps to spell out a word. Oh, that's Uh, fun. I like that. Brian, Aaron, Nate, Dusty, Bam. Yeah, wow. Yeah, we're learning some stuff here. But but it would need to be a whole line, right? Yeah, it that's just, not... Because it's just, that's just what, like an acronym or something. When mm-hmm. it's like, I guess like, that's or true. Whatever. So it would need to be like, you know, Brian went to the store. Aaron, you know, was Eight. like, get me some G's. <laughs> <laughs> Nate said, what are you doing, oh, dude? Yeah. What and a, Dusty what a, what said, a poem. <laughs> and Dusty said, more cheese, please. <laughs> That's that, better than the red please, wheelbarrow. Please, please, and cheese rhymes in our in our thing here. It does. That yeah, was please. freestyle. If you yeah. give it some, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Able to sit down if I just let you do your thing, yeah, you'll find the rhyme eventually. Yeah. Do you know any modern day? I wonder if I poets. Uh, no, I guess not. You know, Chance the Rapper did a poem on his uh, NPR Tiny Desk. Hmm. So I guess he's a, a a poet, but I can't name a name one who's really kicking. Maya Angelou, is she still around? I think she died, but uh, she's the only one I could name in recent years. Shel Silverstein, remember him? I know the name. He recently yeah. died, too. Yeah. The side, with a sidewalk. Oh, Dr. You know, I wanted to talk about there Shel Silverstein yeah. because Shel Silverstein had these poetry books where the sidewalk ends, Lighthouse mm-hmm. in the Attic, 
But he also wrote a ton of country songs, like so many country songs. He wrote Boy Named Sue by Johnny Cash. Oh. He wrote a lot. Shel Silverstein? Yeah, he wrote a lot. He wrote The Giving Tree Guy? Yeah, he wrote, I don't know if he's the Giving Tree Guy, but he wrote a lot of um, uh, songs. Um, uh, oh, it's a junior. Dang, what is the guy's name? Uh, Hank Williams. No, um, Bobby Bear Jr. He wrote a lot of okay. uh, of songs uh, by him. He wrote uh, uh, he wrote so many. So he wrote uh, he wrote put another log on the fire. Uh, wrote, Bobby yeah. Bear Jr. When I was in college, would come play at little die places. The t- oh, the Taker, uh, written really? with Je- Chris Christopherson. Um, Rosalie's Good Eats Cafe. That's a good one. The cover of a Rolling Stone. Sylvia's Mother. Uh, I did a, uh, I got a YouTube video where I did uh, Dusty Slay's top five country songs uh, written by Shel Silverstein. Uh, now, yeah. after doing that, a lot of people commented and I learned a lot more. It's an old video. I learned a lot more songs by, that are written by Shel Silverstein. But it's like, it's pretty amazing the amount of really great country song shell silverstein wrote i had absolutely no idea it is this. so wild i'm glad you brought that up because i'm like uh, uh bobby bear jr has so many written by him bobby bear jr very underrated i mean growing up no one ever talked about him now i'm starting to think i'm questioning he like my buddy was in a fraternity at mtsu and he came and played at the fraternity house this was in the early 90s but wow. i think it was bobby bear jr because i just thought his dad was big i didn't know he had a lot of success. Now, yeah, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe th- this is Bobby Bear that I'm talking about in junior. But I thought, well, that mentioned Bobby Bear Junior. under Shell Sever- Silverstein. Uh, but, but but Bobby Bear sings lullabies, legends, and lies. That album is really great, and I think quite a few <laughs> of these songs is written by uh, Shell Silverstein. He's an interesting looking fellow. Um, uh, oh yeah, five hundred miles away from home. Great song. <laughs> do you know what a uh, well, Dusty? Do you have like a f- favorite Mar- Margie's at the Lincoln Park Inn? Mm. Dang, that's a good song. <laughs> I don't know it. I was just gonna say, do you have like a favorite song or songwriter that you think is like poetry? Well, there's so many, and uh, I don't know as many songwriters as I should, but like Chris Christopherson is really great. Um, um, you know, um, uh, some of his songs uh, are just uh, the, the I don't know. So they're all like poetry to me. Mm-hmm. These old country uh, writers. Yeah. It's all like poetry. Yeah. Sunday Morning Coming Down. By Chris, the Chris Christopherson version to me is he wrote it. It's better than the Johnny Cash version because Chris Christopherson sounds really run down, and it's it sounds a little more raggedy, mm-hmm. and it's like that's what you want with that song. Wow! Do you know the song? Yeah, yeah, so I'm good. From the bottle to the bottom, mm-hmm. from the bot, yeah, from the bottle to the bottom by Chris Christopherson. So great. I mean, it's just like just a man talk. He's like he's you. He's like, it's basically, you ask me if I'm happy now, that's good as any joke I've heard. Mm-hmm. Since, it seems since I seen you last, I done forgot the meaning of the word. <laughs> it's so good. Um, yeah. You know. That's great. There's a songwriter, Lori McKenna. Have you heard of her? She wrote a lot of big country songs. Humble and Kind by Tim McGraw. She wrote that song, which was a big song for us. She's written a bunch. But she has a song called People Get Old. It's one of my favorite songs, dude. And that last, it's just about, it's about me. It's about the passage of time through her dad. She's like reflecting on her dad and she's saying like, now I have all these memories and now I'm as old as you were in these memories now. And then the last chorus, she says, houses need paint. Winters bring snow. Nothing says love like a band of gold. Babies grow up. Houses get sold. That's how it goes. Time is a thief. Pain is a gift. The past is the past. It is what it is. Every line on your face tells a story. Somebody knows the people you love get old. And you're like, dang, I got chills mm, saying right. that just now, dude. Mm. I'm going to listen to that on the way home. You know, the uh, John Anderson song, mm. Years, that we talked about last last week or a couple yeah. weeks ago. Uh, if you watch the video, I feel like it's more impactful because he's talking about years and just how they go by. And yeah. it's like... But you see, uh, you know, basically all these pictures going by of all the people he's worked with over the years. And it's just, it's such, it's such a powerful thing because it's like, 
you know, you see like this old man, but it's like, look, you know, at the career he's had. And, yeah. and it's like, in, in the way it's framed though, it's like he's in pictures with people more famous with him, right? Mm-hmm. So he's like, mm-hmm. he's paying homage. He's not being like, look how big I am. He's like, look how fortunate I've been to be able to work with all these people. That's how I see it. <clears throat> but it's just, yeah. it's just similar to you that. You got me into that. I'm going to listen to that Don, song a lot. Don Williams uh, mm-hmm. is really great. Don Williams has a song called Good Old Boys Like Me. Mm-hmm. And that song really paints a picture to me of like my own childhood. Uh, even right up to the very, you know, there's some details where he's talking about his dad reading the Bible to him while drunk. My dad was <laughs> not an alcoholic yes. and my dad also doesn't read the Bible to me. Yeah. So, uh, but, but I can, I can still see that sort of thing, but even right up to the end, like him leaving his hometown to go on and do other things. It's a, it's a powerful song. Yeah. Don Williams. I was trying to think which my favorite, I believe in you. I believe in you is great. Lord, I hope this day is good. Yeah. I'm feeling empty and misunderstood. I should be thankful. Lord, I know I should, but Lord, I hope this day is good. <laughs> you should put a Spotify playlist together of all these songs you're talking about. Well, I do have a a Spotify playlist called Dusty Slice uh, Country Songs. Uh, it's out there. Very good. I mean, it's so long. I gotta. I should start a uh, uh, a new playlist because it's it's too long now. Dusty Slay's Country Radio is what it's called, but mm-hmm. it's, you know, 15 hours, 16 hours almost. Yeah. So wow. it's a little, little too long. Okay. Okay. But it's, I mean, I got a, I got a lot of like new and old in there. It's, a, it's some popular that you would recognize, a lot of stuff you wouldn't recognize. It's very good. Probably a good place to wrap it up. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> thanks for, uh, thanks for sticking with us. If they did, probably not. Yeah. I would um, think that. I thought it was a hot episode. Uh, yeah, I thought it was joking. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, Dusty, you want to tell us where you're going to yeah, be? Yeah, this weekend, matter of fact, I'm off, and uh, it feels good. I have been mm-hmm. going at it, and it feels good to be off. Uh, but next week, if the world doesn't end after the eclipse, mm-hmm. I, I'll i be in Charleston, West Virginia uh, on April 12th at, uh, at a theater. And then uh, on you'll, April, you'll fly into the Chuck Yeager Airport. Oh yeah, your big Chuck Yeager guy, oh, dude. Oh, yeah. One of our greatest heroes. Yeah, yeah I can't wait to meet him. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> and then on the April thirteenth, I'll be a, outside of uh, Pittsburgh. I, I guess it's Munhall, Pennsylvania, hmm. but right outside of Pittsburgh, doing a theater show there. It's going to be great. Uh, I'm, I'm doing. I mean, I got my schedule is. Lined up a lot of theaters coming up, and I'm pumped about That's it. That's awesome. Man. So it's going to be great. Come on out. We're having a good time. How about it? I'm also a theater act now. Um, we'll get to your little comedy shows later, but. Uh, <laughs> That's <was> crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your little kill boxes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dang. Uh, this Saturday I am in Miamisburg, Ohio. That's just outside Dayton at the Plaza theater. Ron Voorhees is on the show. Jesse Rothacker. If you're a fan of the podcast, you can be on the show. Uh, <laughs> just come on out. <laughs> I'll put you on there and it's going to be great. That's the Plaza theater in Miamisburg. Then April 20th, I'm in Moberly, Missouri Ooh. at the fourth street theater. Your friend, Will O'Donnell. Oh yeah. Is uh, Will's great. Yeah, uh, great. so I'm pumped about that show. Yeah. So I haven't met Will, but I'm looking forward to it. And then April 27th, I'm going to Connecticut for the first time at, uh, in Fairfield, Connecticut at Fairfield comedy circle, April 27th. Boom. It's a fun month. Yeah. Take my April, April 13th. 11th through the 13th, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Dr. Grin. All right. Yeah, so I've Love had mine Dr. Dr. Grins. Grins for the first time in April. And then uh, at the end of the month, April 25th through the 28th, I'm in Atlanta, ATL, at the Punchline Comedy Club. So right. Grand Rapids, Michigan, Atlanta, Georgia. Come see Aaron. This is Aaron talking, by the way. Are the Braves at home? The Braves are at home that weekend. I'm going Sunday. Going All right. Day game. Who they play? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Look forward to hearing about it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. right. We love you all. Thank you to our sponsors, Delete Me, Butcher Box, Rocket Money, and AG1. There baby. it is. Poetry. Poetry. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetsy, and my wife, Laura, on the Audio Boom platform. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast. <laughs>